Hello, hello, everybody of the internet. Daryl Eves here. So today we are doing a live stream. And so this means it's going to be a long one. <laughs> and I'm going to answer your questions. We're going to give tips. We're going to give strategies. We're going to give techniques. And it's all starting right now. So you don't want to miss this. DarylEves.com Hello, my people of the internet, Daryl Eves here. Now, I am super, super excited to be live with you today. And I thought, you know what? I got a great office, got a great uh, studio. And I thought, hey, why don't we actually start doing more live streams and literally answering your questions, doing some channel reviews, and so on. What do you guys think? <laughs> if you think that's a great idea, go ahead and put it in the comments. Uh, we're going to have an active comment thread. Uh, I also are able to see all the comments that are coming in, and I can kind of pull these comments uh, to the top of the queue. Uh, and what we're going to do is try to do this the most efficient way, which is I personally want to answer your questions about YouTube, your channel, so on. And so what I thought we'd do, uh, we have about three hours together. Does that sound good? <laughs> three hours? <laughs> And uh, what we're going to do is in the first half, we're going to literally go over your questions. Uh, I'm definitely going to answer the super chat questions first and then kind of move on to everybody else. But before we get the super chat going, uh, I really would like to know where in the world are you from? And also, <laughs> this is an important thing. And also, what do you want to achieve on YouTube? What, you know, where are you at with your YouTube process? Are you a beginner? You're intermediate? You're advanced? These are the things that I would like to know uh, about you. And that'll help me basically understand the people that are actually on this live stream. Now, there's a couple cool things that's actually going to happen uh, today. Uh, today, we're actually uh, going over. Uh, some announcements that I have, and we're going to be a lot more uh, in depth about it, uh, which is, and I'm pulling up my computer. I am doing all this by myself here, <laughs> but um, we actually have some uh, announcements about the Vid Summit. If you're not familiar with the Vid Summit, Vid Summit is a conference that I put on every year, and it's in LA. Well, today, today, have a huge announcement for that. Uh, and it's going to benefit all of you in the community. So this is something that I'm excited about, something you need to do. So we got uh, Imran from Pakistan. We got Kat, uh, Kat from the UK. Uh, we got, uh, let's see, uh, Johnny from Texas. We got, uh, wow, we got quite a few. Epic Marble Race from Utah. Hey, Epic Marble Race. I'm from Utah too. <laughs> we love it. Um, we got a lot coming in. We got a lot from all over. We got Gazelle from uh, uh, Giselle from uh, Toronto. Uh, Betsy from where are you at, Betsy? Bangladesh, I think. Let's see. There we go. Uh, we got uh, Teth Williams from Portland. Uh, that's great. So what we're gonna do is let you kind of comment a little bit about your YouTube channels. I'm gonna pull this in real, uh, really quick. Uh, we'll start featuring. A uh, few of you. Uh, here is another one from Trey. Uh, so Trey is from Chicago. And um, this is really cool. Thank you, Trey, for jumping on and being a part of this live stream. That's what it's all about. Uh, let's do another one here. These are great little shout outs too. Uh, here we got um, Steve from Oregon, it looks like. And we also have... Uh, Jessica um, from California. So this is awesome. Uh, Richard from VA. Hey, I was just out in the VA area a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and we actually got the official Blues Clues channel, if that's true or not. I don't know if it is or not. That's awesome. Um, we got uh, Adventures with David and Aaron from California, which is awesome. And let's do another one here. Uh, Garrett from Missouri, maybe. Here we go. Garrett from Missouri. Okay. So this is, uh, this is great. Uh, we're able to uh, pull this in. And I'm really excited about all of you that are on the uh, live stream right now. Um, one of the things that I would like to see 
is uh, a lot more involvement with this community. And for me, um, this is something that I've been really uh, thinking about as of late. Uh, I think a lot of you are aware that I own a company. We work with content creators and brands. We also own uh, a lot of different businesses that, uh, that we work with this, in this space. And I, I, I took a step back. Um, every, every July, I take a little bit more time off. Um, it's been pretty intense um, with, with work and speaking and training and out and doing the consulting stuff. And I, I'm like, what actually makes me the most happy? <laughs> and uh, right now, I, I can tell you right now, it's uh, literally spending time with my uh, family. Um, and also, it's also uh, being, um, being a YouTuber, like being involved with YouTube. I just really, 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 really love it. Um, so that being said, I, I want to do more of this. So hopefully you're able to uh, see this uh, as, as a first step of getting more actively involved uh, with the YouTube community. Um, this channel, I've, I've literally been a resource channel for many years. I would like to transition that quite a bit uh, in the next little, uh, you know, the next few weeks uh, to be a more active channel. So I don't know if you noticed this, but I've been posting about twice a week. And my first question to you is, um, I'm always out and about with brands and YouTubers. Would you guys like to see some vlogging where I'm like vlogging, hey, this is how YouTubers actually collaborate. Like we were actually in Washington, DC. Uh, there was about seven YouTubers coming together and we were recording videos uh, and I had access to that. Is that something that you guys would like to see? If, if so, go ahead and put it in the chat. I definitely would love to see uh, your thoughts on that for sure. And I, I think the big thing for me is um, if this is going to be uh, valuable for you, I'll actually upload it to the YouTube channel. So let me give you uh, a, an idea. So in two weeks, I, I'm going to one of my clients. Uh, this might surprise you, but one of my clients is actually Google. <laughs> and so I'm like literally leaving Southern Utah. I fly up to, uh, to San Jose, get a, get a ride to Mountain View. And I'm actually doing a consult with the Google team on their own YouTube channels that Google actually has. Um, and so I, I was wondering, is that something that you guys wanna see in the interaction? Does this have uh, interest for you? Uh, if you find value in that, go ahead and put it in the chat because ultimately end of the day, uh, I want this to be a community decision, not just my decision of what I want to do. So if you think it's a great idea to do it. Now, here's, here's a, a little side note on this is that when we actually do uh, consults and stuff, I might give tips and ideas for you as a content creator. Um, I do travel a lot. I do a lot of consults a lot. That's where uh, the primary uh, portion of my time is spent. Uh, is doing these consults all around the world and then also doing uh, projects uh, with, with YouTubers. So what do you guys think? I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and pull in um, another one from Hashish saying, I learned from video creators also. <laughs> uh, here we go, there we go. Um, I'm running all this all by myself here, which is really cool. I, I wanna get down in this pattern here. Um, and so I'm running this live stream on this box right here. We have multiple cameras uh, going on. We got this camera, this camera. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to see this camera, but um, we got uh, different you know, part of the studio. So uh, I'm literally trying to um, be as efficient as I can with my time. And that's why I was thinking maybe I sh should start doing more live stream. I was like, oh, I can upload a video uh, tomorrow. Uh, or we could do a live stream. And so I decided to do a live stream so I can answer your questions. So let's go to the questions. I would love to get your questions here. Um, and the, uh, let's do this. So I'm literally going through, let's actually change my view here and I can go there, there we go. So if you have a question about YouTube, uh, about anything, these questions that we're gonna be going over is brought to you by our sponsor today. And our sponsor today is VidSummit. VidSummit is a conference I put on every year in LA. Uh, this is our fifth year. And it's all about helping you as content creators grow your audience 
and leveraging that audience to make a, a solid business out of this. Now, if you want information about VidSummit, you go to vidsummit.com. Uh, we got a new offer here, which is really exciting for all of you. Uh, there's some of you that can't come. We actually lowered the price of our virtual ticket. We got a lot of feedback. Um, from people that are like in different parts of the world and we wanted to make it more affor affordable to you. So that being said, if you go to vidsummit.com, hit the reserve your ticket, uh, you will get a live stream that's actually happening at VidSummit and uh, it's the cheapest that it's ever been. <laughs> so, okay, so let's go ahead and answer your questions and go from there. So... We'll go to Jessica uh, Salas first. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Um, li okay, uh, uploads is so old, live is the best. Okay, that wasn't a question, but that was a good comment there. Um, I'm gonna go to this next one here. It's uh, from Ace Moving and Lawn Care. Um, and it is, what's the optimal duration of a vlog video? Uh, and doing it a couple times a week. Okay, so with this, uh, this is a great question. This is one that I actually get quite a bit. Now, I, I was actually uh, one of the only creators to actually present on the main stage at VidCon. Uh, I love VidCon. VidCon's an amazing event. Um, I, I was there from the beginning and all nine years, been a part of it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, um, this is a constant question that I, that I get. Now, uh, over a year ago, uh, YouTube was looking at a lot of different indicators to really help your videos be ranked. Uh, one of those is how frequently do you upload? And literally there are content creators all around the world that get what they call creator burnout. I don't know if you felt that. I've definitely felt it at times. And this creator burnout is real. And YouTube's like, why are we penalizing our creators if they don't upload every day? And so what they did is started to shift where they, where they actually start suggesting the videos uh, before they are doing a huge amount of suggestion on the, um, on the, first, seven, uh, the, the first seven days of that. In fact, I, th I think I have the slide. Let me just pull up the slide because that, that right there is, uh, let me just uh, pull this up real quick. That, it's a super, super powerful uh, presentation that I actually gave and it had everything to do with, um, you know, how suggestion works. So in short, while I'm pulling this up, hopefully we can get here. Um, let's see here to do, find my VidCon slide. Here we go. Oh, that's Clamor. Okay. I like ClamorCon too. Okay. Um, so I think that the most important thing is realizing that um, it has shifted uh, quite dramatically. Um, and, and this one is, um, let me pull this up here. Um, so you're able to see that. Um, this, this data was given to us by vidIQ. I, there's no way I would have got this data without vidIQ. Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, it, it comes back down to this, okay? Um, this is where YouTube was at last year. And so you're able to see the green, green line, that's subscribers. Uh, views and it shows the percentage and um, you see the suggested videos. So the suggested videos was 66.75%. Um, that being said, I want to show, I want to show you real quick. Um, then look how it flip-flopped. This is uh, March, uh, 2018. Uh, it literally flip-flopped where subscribers are being more notified and, and also that uh, suggested videos went way, way, way down. So that being said, that's a great question. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's really about knowing, um, you know, what you're able to do if you're passionate about it. I just started a YouTube channel. Uh, the last day of May was our first upload. And um, our, our goal was to do content three times a week. Uh, and uh, last week was the first time that we actually did three times a week. And uh, for me, um, if you're if you're building a team and you're building uh, people around you, you, you're you're less likely to get burned out. Why did I choose to go three times a week? Is because um, I'm more worried about growing an audience than I am about the algorithm. And uh, it, it, there's something about this. There's something about having the audience be engaged with your content 
several times a week where like, oh, it's Monday or oh, it's Wednesday or oh, it's Friday. You know, we have a release. Um, and I got to go to my favorite creator and they're coming onto YouTube. They're watching your videos and that's kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of where that's at. Okay. Uh, uh, biological operations asked this, uh, wonderful question. What is TubeBuddy? <laughs> All right. So TubeBuddy is literally my favorite channel management tool. Uh, they're probably on this live stream. So hopefully someone from there, but if you, if you're interested in TubeBuddy, uh, it literally saves me hundreds of hours a month doing strategies and tactics. Now, let me tell you a strategy that I do. Um, I might change out a card. That's the little uh, info card that pops up. I might change that out on all videos. Um, and, and I might have it be very strategic of where I place it. I'm not going to go into detail on that. But TubeBuddy literally gives me the ability to find that uh, card. Let's say we have a thousand different videos and literally replace it in a matter of minutes. Where before, when I had to do this exact same thing, and I was doing the exact same thing before TubeBuddy, uh, was that I had to go through every single video and switch it out. And so that's what I love about TubeBuddy. This is something that uh, that he j just literally saves me a ton of time. If you go over to TubeBuddy, go, to, go over to TubeBuddy.com forward slash go and put Daryl's Buddy uh, in there and you'll get a good discount there. Okay. All right. So, uh, coming back to the next question, um, uh, we got a lot of people saying they love, uh, TubeBuddy. Let's go here. This is a great question here. Um, and, 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 uh, th this question actually comes from, uh, team, uh, chaos. Uh, why are video views in July going down? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, there are a ton of things that happen on YouTube. One of the things is there's ups and there's downs and then there's sideways. Okay. And um, I found that, uh, you know, especially with revenue, there's certain times that you make a ton of money with your video content. Uh, and, and there's times that you get a ton of views. Uh, I want to talk about July in specific. Now, July is a huge month for certain types of videos. Uh, kids are out of school and they're more on YouTube instead of at school. And so you might see a huge spike. However, that being said, depending on your content, you might see a dip. And if it's not that type of content that would engage during the summer or, or whatever it may be. Uh, also, uh, when it comes to views, um, you know, I, I always look at how much you're making per view, uh, which they call the CPMs. You heard CPMs on YouTube. And what that actually comes back down to is this, um, you know, Jul July is the most horrible month outside of January and February of the year of making money. And, and what happens is advertisers like me, uh, place ads on on YouTube videos. And what they do is they, they have a budget, but they have to generally spend their budget per quarter. And so at the end of each quarter, there's a mad push to whole, buy a whole bunch. So end of quarter would be December. December's numbers is enormous, enormous, enormous. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's just, just ginormous. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Ginormous. And the reason why is you have the holidays and also you, you're at the end of the quarter and also you're at the end of the year. So they might have a yearly budget. So they're putting all their budget in, trying to do whatever they can. Uh, and then uh, January and, and February are a little weak unless you're a tech channel and the reason why a tech channel is because then you have some conferences like CES and so on that brands come in and want to buy on that. But, you know, as a whole, it, it, it doesn't. And then what happens is, you know, your March and April comes comes up. It's mostly uh, all of March, but April's views start to come in a little bit greater. Uh, greater. And then uh, June, June's CPMs are great. And then it goes another three months. And then you're starting to see that as well. So why are... Uh, you know, uh, views lower in July. What I would look at is the trends on your channel and within your niche. I would literally g uh, put together, this is a power tip, by the way, put together a list of 20 different channels that you follow that would be similar to yours and see if they're experiencing, uh, you know, a decrease in views. Because if they are too, it's, it's basically the niche as a whole that is going down. 
Okay, so um, let's go ahead. And <laughs> let's go ahead and go for another question here. Um, are you are you getting value out of this? I, I I'm loving it. Um, this one is coming from Dead Hulk. Um, I have a gaming channel, but a Supercell copyright issue. Um, so this right here, uh, copyright issues are really, really sticky. Um, one of the reasons why I don't like working with uh, music channels as much is we always kind of run into copyright issues. And um, generally, it depends on how your content is being displayed, okay? And, and Supercell, uh, there are a lot of great uh, YouTubers that uh, use Supercell and play Clash of Clans and Clash Royale. Yes, I know these things because I'm addicted to Clash Royale. And there are YouTubers like uh, Clash with Ash or Clash Ash or whatever. And you know they, they make uh, Supercell money because they're teaching people strategies and tactics. Now, there, there's a line sometimes uh, when you're using content in a negative way, is it a parody? Is it something? What I would do is definitely fight the copyright if it's a parody or whatever it may be and, and, and submit it out. Uh, you never know. It might be just one of those systems that auto detects and they need to, to go from there. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the, a couple questions are coming from this, a channel review. So if there is super chats, I gotta open the super chat. I haven't been doing that here. Um, let's do this real quick. Um, so if we do a, a super chat, can we get a channel review later? No, basically I'm gonna be pulling in channel reviews at the end of this. Um, but if you do a super chat, it would be appreciated and we can see what we can do. So let me, I, got, I gotta open up a um, thing here. Let me get, uh, I, 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 I totally uh, was supposed to have this set up and I didn't. So let me just kind of go in here real quick. Um, I do appreciate uh, all the super chats come in. I just want to make sure I get them all um, answered. And I have to go into an area to, to answer them here. So let me, give me one second. Let me, uh... All right. Here we go. Um, some of these won't be able to go on screen, but we'll, you know, we'll be able to, uh, to do that. Here we go. Um, okay. This one comes from Brooklyn. Uh, it was my uh, $9.99 super chat. Thank you, Brooklyn. Appreciate that. Do you have any tips for growing music channels aside from doing covers? P.S. I've already seen your vids on it but I was curious if you found any new tips in 2018. Love your content. Well, Brooklyn, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, for me, uh, and this is something that I'm passionate about, um, is finding the right medium. Now on YouTube, YouTube is literally inundated with a lot of musicians coming together and trying to put out their music. And so there's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of clutter. Uh, that being said, um, it's something that I, I, I think that you as a content creator needs to, to, to look at, well, how can I get in front of the right people uh, and, and really grow my audience? Now for me, I can tell you right now, if I was consulting you, which I am right now, uh, I would look at Musical.ly as an alternative uh, for your daily content. Now you might be doing other things on YouTube, which is, which is great, but if you build that audience on Musical.ly, there's not as, as much competition compared to, uh, to YouTube. Uh, and also you're able to take that traffic and help push your, your bigger original music or whatever it may be. Uh, I would look at Musical.ly. I would also look at Instagram. Instagram's getting really, really interesting. And I don't know who your demographic is. Uh, if it's teenagers, I would definitely do a strategy on Instagram as well so that you're able to really connect with your audience. Um, the, the, the consistent thing that you need to do is put out uh, a lot of content. And so several posts a day on Musical.ly, several posts a day on Instagram. And then when you do those great videos on YouTube, uh, you can put, put it on Instagram a little bit, clip to push traffic uh, to YouTube. That was a great, great question. Okay, the next one comes from um, X uh, Gambit. 
Uh, hey, hey, Daryl, in order to, okay, in order for your video, we need to see a spike in views to watch time for the initial release, or let's see, um, hold on one second. It's, it's moving too quick, to, the, the, the chat's moving too quick. And I can't pull it up on Super Chat. I, I don't know what I did, I just didn't do it right. Um, okay, hi Daryl, I need to know the order for a video to do well that needs a spike in views and watch time upon its initial release, but how small uh, channels do this, uh, please review my channel. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is talk about new channels for a minute. Uh, because you're like, you know, how can a video do well? Do they need to spike? Does it need to grow? Um, I, I'm, I think I'm getting the gist of the question here uh, from from X Gambit. Uh, uh, basically, it's this: um, you got to get as many eyeballs on that video as possible when you start a channel. So, like, we just started a channel back in um, you know May May 30th. Uh, I literally created the account on the 28th of May, created a new YouTube channel and uh, got it optimized. And then we released our first video on May 30th. And my thing was, I need to do two things. Stage one, um, and I'm literally documenting this whole process for you guys, but stage one is that I wanted to get a thousand subscribers on that channel. And that was my, my super goal. I was working really, really hard for that. But the most important thing was getting the right type of views for that channel, uh, the right type of subscribers. And so I knew my specific audience for this and I knew the type of uh, audience and how they engage because I was engaging with that audience on other, other projects that I've done. And so I wanted to take that time and develop that audience so that we were making content that would resonate with them. So that being said, it my goal was to get a thousand subscribers in, in 30 days. Now, uh, most of you would be saying, oh, that's super great, uh, but I can do it in three. That's great, that's great. Like I, I can get, I could probably get a thousand subscribers in 12 hours. Um, but the difference is, is I want the right subscriber. And that right subscriber is my target avatar. And, and then what I wanna do is kind of go out from there. So it literally, I had a goal to do it in 30 days. Uh, I did not reach my goal. Um, it, it actually took me 36 days. <laughs> and with that, you know, the content's improving. Uh, my partners that I'm working with are doing a lot better job uh, with that as well. And then the next thing we, we tried to do is ramp it up. So the, the next goal, which is what I call stage two, is to literally get those video views being viewed enough that we can actually qualify for the YouTube uh, partner program. And so my strategy was, hey, I already have connections, let's go ahead and collaborate. Well, we were able to do uh, uh, stage two, we did a collaboration with some YouTubers that had the same target uh, demographics that we had uh, for their viewers. And we were able to do that in just, you know, pretty much a couple days that we were able to get stage two done. Stage three now is, is literally start growing the channel, getting as many subscribers as we can. Our next benchmark is 5,000. Uh, we're just a little bit away from getting 5,000 subscribers. And, you know, it, it's been great. Okay, uh, let's do another question here. Um, and I do apologize um, if there was a way to pull this up, I would. Um, maybe there is, I don't know. I, 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 it's it's kind of hard because I thought it was gonna go into uh, this view, but it's not. Um, you know, it, it's not uh, tagging it as a super chat for some reason. Okay, so the next one is questions. Uh, as a gaming channel, I've noticed issues playing games. I don't have authority. Uh, on, do you have any strategies for implementing new content that won't negatively affect this channel, the channel? And that's from Tag Back TV. Thank you uh, so much for your super chat for 10 bucks. Uh, I really, really do appreciate that. Let, let me go ahead and do it at least this way where, um, let's see here. Um, let's see if I can do it this way because this, this, this will be an easy way to, here we go. This, this will be an easy way to, to, to navigate a little bit. So when I have the questions, I'll, I'll kind of go to 
uh, their their YouTube channel, and and we can kind of kind of go from there. So, but the, I think the big thing tag back is is this. Um, if I was playing a game and I wanted to gain authority, the first thing that I would do is contact the company that actually makes the game that I'm actually playing. Um, and they have ambassador programs where they whitelist your channel uh, and so you don't get penalized from them. Uh, and also you get on their radar so as you're getting more traffic and so on. So let me give you an example of that. If you literally play any Nintendo game, uh, to get around the copyright issues with that, you need to be able to be whitelisted on it. If not, you get a copyright strike. I've gotten a copyright strike for some of the videos we put up because we were using Nintendo-related stuff, and Nintendo literally fr frowns on it, which kind of blows my mind. But going through the process of their ambassador program, then it was no-brainer, and we just got on their list, and all we had to do is uh, document what content we were actually putting up. So. Uh, tag back, what I would do if it was me is literally reach out to the games that you're playing, get with the uh, the team. There's a community team that you can uh, go with and uh, they, they really want to help facilitate getting their game out there. Uh, these brands are getting smarter and smarter uh, on this for sure. Uh, so, okay, let's go back. And I, I, I definitely want to do this just so that no one's feeling the, the shaft. Uh, the, the previous question uh, came from this, this uh, YouTube channel. It looks like they do some uh, kids react type stuff, which is really, really cool. And then let me go back to uh, the next one. Sorry, I should have thought about this earlier. But, you know, when you're doing your own switching and you're live, you know, <laughs> things happen, right? Okay, let me uh, go right here. Here's Brooklyn's. All right, Brooklyn, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally subscribe. I want to hear your music. Um, this will be awesome. Uh, you guys can check out uh, Brooklyn for sure. Um, and let me go here again. I think we had one additional super chat. No, did we? Yes. Let's go here. Um, and we'll be doing channel reviews a little bit later, uh, but this is more question and answers. I know a lot of you had... Questions you've always wanted to ask uh, me, so let's go ahead and put it in there. Um, uh, this is another super chat that came in, so appreciate that. Okay, so that being said, let's go ahead and go down to the next question. Uh, the order of priorities for questions, I'm taking super chats first, and then we can do other questions as the super chats come down. Uh, so if you have a question for me, you do a super chat within this uh, block of time that we've designated. I'm gonna answer your questions the best that I possibly can. Um, okay. Um, the next one comes from It's Shannon Grace. It says, Daryl, uh, would you please touch on best practice of promoting your channel on videos on social media? Is it best to post your thumbnail photo, uh, edited uh, promo video, et cetera, best days, so on and so forth. So um, Shannon Grace, let's go ahead and show your channel real quick as I'm giving you some advice uh, from there. Uh, okay, so basically what I like to do is think of promotion first. Um, and I, I, before I even create content on YouTube, I'm like thinking, how can I promote this thing? Uh, where does my audience belong? Uh, now, for me, it's all about uh, finding where they congregate. It could be with certain YouTube channels. It could be on certain uh, you know, Facebook groups or Instagram uh, accounts or whatever it may be. It could be wh wherever. And ultimately, I want to be able to uh, go into that community and contribute to that community as much as I can and give value uh, and let that value go up to a point where uh, that you're able to um, get reputation and so on and so forth. Now that takes a little bit of time, but when you actually post something, then people will literally give you feedback and give you comments on what to do. And it's basically with that art audience that you're already trying to grow and that's how you're able to get an audience. Now, that being said, your question is more about social media. When do you post? Uh, for me, I would literally uh, do it. It depends on how often you release your content. Let's say uh, it looks like you're releasing content once a week uh, from what I can see. Uh, so if you're releasing content once a week, 
um, on Tuesday. What I would do is tease something on Sunday um, or even Monday saying, hey, this is coming out. I would literally uh, do a Instagram story. I would do uh, Instagram post, have it be somewhat related. So it could be a poll of what they would like to see. Uh, and also maybe photos of you know the video that's coming out. You're kind of teasing them for it. And then when you release the video, I would definitely do another story and then another post that's really pushing traffic to that, that video. Um, and that would be on all socials. Uh, what I would do if you're using Facebook is never, ever, ever, ever put YouTube in the post. Um, I would never put uh, the link in the post. Uh, Facebook will literally suppress the, the amount of reach that that post actually has. Don't try to tag everybody in the world on it. They'll suppress that, that, that uh, thing from there. So what I usually do, hey, I put up a thumbnail, say, hey, just, uh, you know, just released a new vid, check it out. And then in the bottom of the comments, I usually put a link to the, uh, to the video. So right now that seems to be working. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but that's the strategy for me. Uh, great question, Shannon. Uh, let's go to the next super chat question. Okay. Um, this has come from uh, Lee Lanier. Let's go to his uh, channel real quick. And I wish I had this pull it up so we could pull this in, but this is, this is a good way, don't you think? Okay, so Lee was asking about, what's the quickest way to get 10,000 subscribers so that I can unlock the YouTube space? Um, for me, it is imperative that um, you, you have a strategy. Now, one of the things I found, Lee, is there are a lot of content creators on YouTube that has no clue about what strategy is. They don't have a plan. <laughs> they don't know what to do. So they just record themselves and put it up on YouTube. And they're just kind of wishing and hoping that this will all work. Uh, that being said, I don't know if you fall under that category or not. Um, what I would do is literally take time to develop relationships with other YouTubers that have a similar audience um, and, and, and become their friend, help them out. I want to share. I want to share a, a really big tip. This actually is a real live tip. I'm going to give you the channel, um, and you're, you're going to see this. It's like super, super powerful. Um, and I just, I love this guy a lot. Uh, you've probably seen him on my channel once, once before. Um, but this channel right here, Shot of Jaeger, uh, Jaegers. Um, I want to tell you a story about them. Okay. Um, they have 1.9 million subscribers. They were able to get about a million subscribers in a year. Um, I want to share the story of Steve. And Lee, this should give you some inspiration, right? So, uh, so Steve was like really wanting to get involved uh, with the community and get a YouTube channel, and he wanted a huge presence. Now, Steve's different than most YouTubers because he realizes that he can learn things from other successful people. And so the first thing that he did, um, this, this is true, is uh, I put a, 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 a basically a request out a couple years ago that I needed someone to help me shoot a video. And so he was literally the grunt. He was the grunt running and getting things, taping stuff up, putting cameras together. Uh, you know, he was our runner and he literally ran, 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 ran. Now, that being said, he didn't just do it on one video shoot. He did it on multiple video shoots. He's like, anytime you're shooting a video, I, he goes, I want to help you. Uh, what did he do? Number one, he developed a strong relationship with me. And I'll, I'll tell you what, out of all the people uh, that I love on YouTube, he's one, probably one of my favorite people in the world because he's a giver. Uh, he's not always a taker. And I, I, I view myself as a giver too, and I'm not always a taker. And you know, we, we just bond there. And Steve, if you're watching, I love you, man. Um, but anyway... That being said, he just wanted to learn, 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 learn. So he's le learning about camera angles and he'd ask questions. He was literally getting a consult every time. But the thing about it was, it wasn't just coming from me, it was coming from other YouTubers that we were collaborating with at the time. And he was learning all these little steps. Then what Steve did, uh, this, is no, this is not uh, a sales pitch or anything. He actually came to the Vid Summit and he was literally talking to different big content creators. He, he actually got 
uh, into uh, the room with uh, these huge presentations about these big YouTubers. But what was really happening was the conversations after. So you had these bigger YouTubers that were literally giving information about what they learned because it's literally advanced strategy stuff. I'm telling you, it's like off the chart like really, really hyper focused on developing an audience, growing and making money. And, and the conversations that led after that was a really deep conversation. And Steve was a part of that conversation and all he was doing was listening. And he's listening to bigger YouTubers, bigger YouTubers that had millions of subscribers. And here he had a thousand, he only had a thousand subscribers. And he's like, what can I do? What can I do? So Steve uh, was listening to what these YouTubers uh, did at Vid Summit. And what happened next was it all became clear. He realized, oh my gosh, here is a missing piece that I never even thought of. Uh, this presentation, here's a piece I never thought of. Here's this presentation I never thought of. And in these conversations, he was already able to start to connect the dots of what he needed to do. Uh, when he came back the next year to Vid Summit, like he literally came back the next year. Uh, he'll never miss another year just because of what it did to his life. But he came back the next year. Do you know what happened? Was he had a million subscribers. He went from 1,000 to a million and, and he was able to do it over that course of the time. How did that happen? Well, it was because he started to connect the dots. He had a relationship with other creators because he was volunteering and giving his time and energy. And, and you know what? He grew, he's smart, he's smart. Like if I was starting a YouTube channel, that's what the way I'd do it. If I had no connection to anyone on YouTube, I would figure out who is on YouTube in my area, who's in YouTube in my state or my Providence, you know, or within a, you know, hundred kilometers of me or whatever it may be and start figuring out who these people are and helping them, you know, be volunteer, whatever, get involved with any uh, YouTube meetups, start your own YouTube meetup if you need to. Um, like right now I, I live in Southern Utah and um, we have only a few YouTubers down here. And so for me, I wanted to have meetups. And so I'm like, come move down here, get a, get a second house. So all these YouTubers are moving down here, not because of me, because it's just pretty amazing place. And we're doing meetups, you know, that's kind of what it's all about. And we're, we're all collaborating together. So that's where it's at, that's, that's the story of Steve. And so Lee, I hope that finds you, uh, you know, giving you some answers specifically of what you could do. Uh, for me, it doesn't change. Like literally getting exposure. You can get exposure through the algorithm. You can get exposure through collaboration. When you do both, then it literally helps you grow faster and faster and faster. So that's what I would do is go learn from people that are actually succeeding. Watch this channel. Watch the other channels that are out there. Be very mindful though of, of literally making data-driven decisions to literally improve your content. Uh, if it was me, I would literally get the Vid Summit uh, uh, virtual ticket. It's the cheapest it'll ever be. You can at least uh, come in wherever you're at in the world. Um, if you can go in person, it's even better because then you can have those uh, conversations. And it's it's something that I've I've created um, because the whole reason why I created the Vid Summit is because I wanted to learn and I want to learn from the best and that's who I put on the stage. And then the conversations in the group is I've, I've literally... Uh, cherry pick the right people being there so we can have those conversations as well. So Lee, that's kind of where we're at. Okay, so the next one is from Chase and Cole. Let's see here, adventures. So if you actually have a super chat question, go ahead and put it in there. That's what we're answering first. And then we'll get to your questions as well. I promise you guys, this will be gold. You'll be able to get uh, information from me. Uh, let's go ahead and put their, their channel up. Um, and it has to do with, uh, I'm in the kids channel niche. Just upload uh, six uploads a week. Want to explore channel clusters? Uh, advice in setting up channel clusters and similar uh, similar channels. Okay, uh, let me kind of clarify um, clarify that for sure. Um, so so basically, we're, we're going here. You have a hundred and twenty one subscribers. You're getting about seven to you know quite a few views um, in a given in a given time. So. Um, look, looks great. Uh, it's a great start. So the first thing that I would do is not worry about channel, uh, creating another channel until you get some traffic here. Uh, the reason why is because you need to uh, put your time, resources, energy, and money into your current channel. When it starts to get momentum, then you can start thinking, okay, how can we expand it? 
But if you can develop an audience, uh, it looks like your kids are involved, uh, Chase and Cole. And so, you know, getting them so that they're more comfortable in front of camera. I'd look at Ryan's toy review, look at Ryan and, and his parents, Sean, and you see what's exactly that dynamic and see if you can improve your content. And then I would also look at um, creating a list of channels that would be similar to yours and seeing if there's certain strategies that all of them are using that you're not. Uh, literally go from that. Uh, and then once you start to get growth, then you can say, okay, now I want to be able to uh, to do this. So right now you have Chase and Cole Adventures. Well, maybe they want to do gaming. So a good channel would be gaming. So they might get into it with Roblox or whatever. So you might be developing another channel too where it's gaming. And I, I personally would say if they're the personality, you know, having them do another activity on another channel that would be uh, not related to this channel, but another one would help you start uh, creating multiple channels. Now, the word channel cluster, uh, I want to clarify that just so that all of us understand. It, it's all about the views and the viewer. Now, if you have a whole bunch of viewers, let's say that you have 10,000 viewers that come to your current channel right now, and they watch every video. And then you have another 30 to 40,000 viewers that come and watch videos sporadically through a given time. They might find it in search, they might find it in suggested or whatever, okay? YouTube's actually looking at that and then it's gonna say, okay, wh what content would this viewer actually connect with? So those 10,000 viewers that come every day, every video, watch the whole thing, you know, that what, what are they most likely to watch next? Next, if you have a channel that has the similar type of viewers, so some of them are subscribed to both channels, then YouTube's gonna see, oh, there's a, a relationship between these channels uh, through their content, their video content. Let's go ahead and start suggesting uh, those videos there. And another thing you can do is get prime placement uh, to get some of those viewers to view your, uh, your first release and then another uh, video on your other channel, you're able to go from there. So that's basically what I would do if it was me, um, is, is go from there, but literally don't, um, don't create so many different channels and hope for the best that it's going to take off. What I would do is say, look right now, I'm going to put my, my heart, my energy, my time in making this first channel start to take off. And then you'll be able to make the call later when people are like, Hey, go play Roblox or do this. You know, you might test a video out to see how the, the audience is engaged. And then you might start another channel on that, depending on your test that you're able to do. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, Den of Nerds is next. Um, let's go ahead and go for the question here. Um, how do I get hub content out there for more people? It seems that YouTube wants our channel to do Star Wars videos, but as a brand, we want to cover multiple nerdy things. Also, do you do one-on-one -on -one consulting? Um, that is a great question. Let me go ahead and pull up your um, thing. So, so first off, um, I am a Star Wars nerd, geek, whatever. Um, yes, um, I, I truly believe that if, uh, th this is a very important point before we get to your question. This is so important. And I'm here to tell you, you can see there's some, some uh, toys and stuff from Star Wars. Star Wars was like a monumental point in my life. Um, if, if at all, uh, Disney, and, I, and I'm going to blame Disney for this. Disney, dang it. Um, this is your problem. Okay. If you would have treated episode, uh, you know, seven, eight and nine. Okay. As one movie. And you understood the script from the first to the second to the third uh, movie. We wouldn't be having this problem here. <laughs> And my problem's this, is that would satisfy a lot of people on there. I, and I think, you know, I, I think it was started that way with J.J. Abrams. I, I'm ranting right now. I, I deserve a couple rants on YouTube. This is one of them because it's dealing with Star Wars, dang it. Okay, so if you, you know, J.J. Abrams, and it was a great, great start. You had a lot of mystery with Ray. You know, there's certain things that were happening in that, that movie. And then the next movie came out. That's all I gotta say. There's no continuity through it. You, you're building up this huge anticipation for this Dark Lord, this Sith, this amazing Sith that literally convinced Kylo to go over 
and you just ruined it. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> The Den of Nerds. See, that's why you're getting views on Star Wars is because you get passionate people like me watching your content. Um, and we're going to watch your content even more. You just got another subscriber, buddy. Okay, so that being said, um, here's the thing. What? No, here we go. That, that's the true subscriber. I just did a bell notification. Okay, so the question is, how do you actually do this? And and then what do you actually do uh, to, to break out? Okay. This, this is something for everyone. Um, number one, and this is really, really important, you want to have different silos of content. Um, and the more specific you are with that content, you're saying, okay, I'm a nerd and I want to do nerdy stuff. What, what's our one silo? So one silo literally is Star Wars, okay? And Another silo might be Star Wars gadgets. You know, that could be a, a nerdy thing, but it's a different silo, but it's kind of related to the first, okay? So you're able to kind of go from there. Uh, the next silo could be what would be related to the, the Star Wars fan that the Star Wars fan would like to see. Is it Marvel Comics? Is it DC? Whatever it may be, put that in there. It, may, it might be superhero stuff, okay? So that's another silo and another silo and another silo. So you gotta figure out what those are. And then you have to put out content consistently in those silos. Um, start with about two or three first, and then kind of experiment some new ones, okay, as you're going, because that's what we do. We kind of experiment all the time. We wanna analyze and adjust all the time. And, and then see why your videos on Star Wars that are taking off and your other videos are not. Look at the average view duration. Are you getting all your subscribers from Star Wars? Do you wanna do other stuff? So what you might wanna do is ask your community, well, what else do you wanna see besides Star Wars? Because we're trying to uh, put out content that you like, but it also needs to, you know, to, to unleash, unleash my inner nerd. Uh, as a content creator, and you can kind of talk about that as well, okay? But literally figure out that out, uh, fix that, fix, uh, figure that out. Okay, that being said, this is really important. Uh, next, you need to have a video that takes off. And so you need to put time, energy, and money putting out really good content when it's that, that other hub content. And for those that don't know what he's talking about, uh, YouTube says that you need to have hero, hub, and help content. And hub is just engaging your subscriber. Um, your hero video is pulling in new subscribers and your help is helping, you know, yeah, you know, through that whole thing, right? So that being said, I, I would literally engage them to see if there's certain things that you're able to do. Uh, I don't think that you're going to be always uh, Star Wars specific, uh, but, you know, that's going to go. Now, your last question was about one-on-one um, uh, uh, -on -one consulting. Um, so, so here's the thing, guys. Um, I literally have uh, spent a ton of time consulting different content creators. Uh, my time is really limited uh, just based off of all the stuff that I do. Now, for those that don't know, I own five businesses. It keeps me super busy. And then I want to teach and train as much as I can. Um, and so what, what, I, what I just opened up, and it, I mean, seriously, like this is timing. Uh, you come to the consultation tab right here, click on it. We just barely opened it up where you can actually do a consult private coaching with me. Um, and uh, this, this is something that I, I freed up some time that we're going to allow this. Before, it's, it's literally been for a private consult uh, that was paid. Was, it's been probably eight months since I've done that one where I, they've come in through this process. Uh, I, I do consults a lot, but I have contracts uh, in place with some of these creators and brands that I'm working with. And so that being said, um, it, you know, it's something that I'm looking at specifically uh, to, to do. So I do have a few spots open each week. And so if you want that, that consult, just go to DarylEves.com and you can go from there. Uh, great, great super chat question. Um, uh, this next one's coming from Chris. Is it better to build a local company business with an owner as the host or grow a personal brand that sends people to a local business? Now, that is a great super chat question. Uh, let's go to the channel. He might not even have anything on the channel, but let's just do it anyway. Um, okay, great. Uh, you know, for me, Chris, this is really, really important that you understand how I actually got started is working with 
uh, local businesses. Now, I, I back in 1999, I started my own business and we did a lot of website design, uh, website hosting, and then I also started to get uh, to meddle into internet marketing and marketing those websites to get the top of the directories because that's what it was back then. You had Alta Vista, Ask Jeeves. Do you remember Ask Jeeves? Uh, you're old enough that you probably remember Ask Jeeves. Uh, you know, Yahoo. And my thing was I wanted to be in the right directories and do the right things at, and get in Yahoo because we've got a ton of traffic that way. And then this mysterious uh, uh, search engine came out called Google. And it literally started changing everything. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I was literally ranking stuff on Google. Google was getting a ton of traffic. And it, was a, it wasn't a directory. It was just more finding what you wanted quickly. And it was really groundbreaking. And uh, it wasn't searching through directory. It was searching through a, a web crawl. And I'm like, this is amazing. And this is where the thing's going to go. And I found that if you did internet marketing back in 1999, it was AKA spam, <laughs> you know, keyword stuffing in every possible way that you could keyword stuff. You could get those websites to actually rank the top and get the phone to ring. And I did that for years. And in fact, I had a, a, a picture on the wall of my arch nemesis. I did have an arch nemesis back then. His name was Matt Cutts. He still is my arch nemesis, uh, but not because I'm ranking videos anymore. It, we just had that relationship where I would get really mad at him because he would, I wouldn't get mad at Google. I'd just get mad, mad at the, the uh, spam czar. Uh, Matt cuts because you know the algorithm changes and so on, and he's the face of that. And so I literally had a picture of him there, and I'd curse at him. You know how Mormons curse? Ding you! That's what I say. You ding you, ding you, Matt cuts. And um, so that's how I got my start. And when I was actually on uh, Craigslist, I was like literally trying to grow my business. Um, we just got some new employees. I needed to get a desk. So I went to Craigslist and I saw this ad that if you can get people to sign up for this new service, that you can be entered in to win an iPod Nano. Now at the time, they had iPods the size of a freaking uh, brick, right? And it was as heavy as a brick. And if you literally threw it at someone, it'd probably kill them. But the iPod Nano just got announced and Steve Jobs just did it. Just, it was like October and, and, and this is like late October. Uh, with a huge announcement for the new iPod Nano. And then they were giving away in November. And I'm like, this is something I want. So I went to this website. Do you know what that website was called? YouTube, baby. <laughs> so YouTube. That was the first time I, I went to YouTube. Th this is a long story, but it's really important for you. <laughs> so I went to YouTube and I found out that they didn't have the dreaded buffer. Now, people that are old, know the, uh, the dreaded buffer that happened on YouTube. You had to buffer through the whole video before you could actually play the video. YouTube was like literally the first that you could actually hit play and it'd start playing. You didn't have to wait to buffer. It was the coolest thing ever. And it, you could actually take those videos and embed them on your website. I'm like, this is just gold. And so I thought as a business owner, what if I did this? Instead of ranking their websites, what if we upsold them? so they could do video content. So I actually uh, did 865 videos that, that uh, next year in 2007, um, or 2006, sorry. Uh, and at the end of 2006 is when Google actually purchased YouTube for a billion, a billion dollars, is like 1.3 billion. And I noticed at the end of uh, that, that time, I upsold all my clients, those videos started to rank. And they started to rank because I had the right title and, and so on. And I found that they ranked really good. They were on page one. I'm like, I didn't do anything. And it, it got found. And I didn't have to fight Matt Cutts. So Matt Cutts didn't become my uh, nemesis anymore because I sold off all my, my uh, website business, uh, ranking business, and I focused 100% on ranking videos. And so I just ranked videos after that. That's all I did. And it was so super easy to get the phone to ring because the video would come up and they said, oh, a video. They'd play it. And it was a better sales message. I learned about messaging and going from there to get the phone to ring. So to answer your question, the question was, how do you do this? You actually make the business owner, the personality, or is it you to get the phone to ring? For me, if they, you give control to the, the business owner, uh, they can always 
cut your contract and you're gone and they have those videos up, you can take them down whatever with your contract. But if you're going to build something, it'd be better to uh, get them to pay for advertising to really get to phone to ring. So it's not necessarily organic. So you become a master in paid ads because then it's controlled. It's like something you can control all the time. Literally turn the ads on, turn it off, get the phone to ring, turn the phone off. That gives you a lot of power and control. What I would do then is also start another channel that would be very niche specific, answering common questions that people have about that, that business. You could become the personality of that and literally get answering those questions that people would have and you could lead them to free information and you could start literally getting the phone to ring. That's what we did. Uh, we got the phone to ring. We, we started uh, paying per video. Then we moved to paid per lead, uh, which was really lucrative. Uh, but it changed for me even then again because one of my clients was a pest control company, uh, Western Pest Control. <laughs> and you know I was getting the phone to ring, phone to ring, and they were going out and have to spray for cockroaches because that was what they do. And they were spraying for cockroaches in a piano store. And the owner of the piano store was trying to sell pianos online. And that was my first taste to the real power of YouTube, which is audience development. Because that client went from just a couple hundred thousand, a couple thousand subscribers to over 1.8 million subscribers in about 18 months. And I literally saw the power of an audience. And so, you know, that's a long, long question or long answer for a short question, but uh, that's what I got, Chris. Okay. The next one is a uh, $10 super chat coming from Home Science. And here we go. There was no question to that, but they have eight, 800,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for your super chat. That was much appreciated. Everybody go check out uh, Home Science. It looks pretty cool. All right, let's do the next one here. Um, sorry, I was supposed to actually pull these super chats up on screen, but this is this is good. Uh, English like a native. Hey, there we go. We got a couple uh, euros coming my way. Um, yeah, so if you want shout out slash uh, questions, I'd really like to answer questions than just do shout outs the whole time. Um, I was just actually on the phone with her a couple weeks ago. A super cool, great channel. Uh, you know, super, super impressive. Uh, go ahead and check out her, her content as well. Thank you for the uh, couple super chats that you did. I appreciate that. I don't know if another one had. Uh, question. Um, man, you, you like hitting those $2, uh, uh, two, I'm sorry, two euros here. Okay. Um, yeah, we're not quite yet doing channel reviews. We'll get to that. I'll come back to those that want to do the channel, channel review here in a second. Um, okay. This comes from Mr. Excel.com. I have 2000 evergreen Excel videos going back to 2007. Holy crap, that's awesome. I've never added tags to my first uh, 1900 videos. Is it worth adding tags to improve discoverability? Uh, putting my kids to work uh, summer job. So let's go ahead and let's go to your channel real quick. That was a good question. I'm all for putting your kids to work, man. Um, I definitely, definitely am. And if you have that much content, uh, that's something that you need to, to do. So the first thing that I would do if it was me is I would I would uh, head over to TubeBuddy.com forward slash go. Okay, that's what I do. And get TubeBuddy. <laughs> that's the first thing I do. Because uh, managing 2,000 videos is crazy. Okay. Um, for this, though, I would go back and let's see what your older video content looks like real quick. Um, yeah. So I would literally go back, Mr. Excel, and I would literally take the time to tag. Now, there's a couple things you can do. You can actually tag the videos. Um, you can tag them. Uh, fairly easy, uh, and you can add them to all the videos. So what I what I would do personally is uh, you can you can select all your videos and then deselect the ones that don't have tags, and then you can add some tags. So you can add some generic uh, Excel, Microsoft Excel, you know, a series of, of tags to every video. I'd do that, okay. And then and then what I would do is also identify. This is where your kids come in. Identify uh, your top 
you know, couple hundred performing videos and then retag those. Uh, that would be a really, really good thing to do. Uh, keeping in mind, uh, I ha I, I, I'll have a video coming out uh, here soon on this. Tagging order is now a priority. And so you wanna make sure that your main keyword is that first one and then having that tagging strategy. You can follow the tagging strategy I have, uh, you know, how to properly tag your videos, but now I need to update that video because so much has changed with tags. Um, and then, you know, that's something you're able to do. I, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but um, things are starting to morph a little bit more to make it more mobile friendly since more and more traffic's mobile. So it's like hashtags now. So. Um, you'll, you'll see that as you're watching a video, you start noticing more hashtags on YouTube um, because it's just so, so much easier. And, and YouTube's curating that. You're not, you're able to do it, but YouTube's curating what hashtags actually show up. Um, uh, I would definitely do that. Thank you for the $20 super chat. It really is appreciative. Now go make your kids work. That's, that's awesome. Okay. So let's do this uh, next super chat. So if you have a, a super chat uh, question, go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, I'll go ahead and answer those. We'll get to the live uh, channel reviews here shortly. Um, this is a three hour uh, broadcast. <laughs> and so we'll give you plenty of time uh, for this. Um, uh, okay, so this next one says, uh, niche off-road off -road related. I run a Facebook group with 16,000 members, but can't seem to get the subs. Uh, what's a good way to get subs? Okay, let me go ahead and put the channel up here. Um, Team T-Rex. Okay, that's, that's cool. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, okay. So here, here's the thing is... You have, you have a, a Facebook community. How do you get the Facebook community, community more involved with your YouTube content? I'm here to tell you that Facebook and YouTube, they don't get along <laughs> at all. <laughs> and so treat it as its own. I would actually just, I, I would start uh, a Facebook page and start uploading that content uh, to Facebook that, that you can share natively in that group and you can actually tie that group into your page so that it's a native upload for your group too. Um, that's, that's what I would do 100%. Um, I would literally take the time uh, and, and do that. And then, you know, if they want to see more or an archive of videos, then, you know, you can start pushing through the, the appropriate links in the appropriate areas, which would be in your bio and stuff like that. Uh, you'd be able to do that for sure. Okay. Um, but once again, uh, Facebook and YouTube don't play along very well. It's something that you just need to get over. And then I, I personally would um, change, this is just a little review right here. Uh, you see these pipes right here um, in your title. Um, don't, don't do that, don't do that. Um, like, like literally uh, pipes, like this is an SEO thing. It started with Matt Cutts or whatever. Pipes is a great way to, to split up keywords and so on and so forth. Um, it's one of the indicators that the AI would probably look to see if it's spam. And so it might suppress that specific video from actually being suggested more. So don't, don't do pipes. If you do pipes, just do one and do it at the very end um, and, and just be very specific with that. But I personally, I've stopped doing pipes a couple years ago because I tested it. And that's something that I would be very cautious not to make your, your title look spammy. Um, it needs to be clickable. And that's one thing that you're, you're able to see from there. Okay. Let's do another super chat question. Um, wow. Okay. We've got another one coming in. Um, at 1500 subs in a year, uh, advice for faster growth, push content from Instagram where I have 8,000, um, but I need to drive more video views. Let's go to that one. It comes from 731 Woodworks. Okay, so let's 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 go. This would be a, a good one to, to look at for sure and and define because ultimately at the end of the day, you gotta figure out where your traffic's gonna come from. And and getting it to come from Instagram is not going to be as lucrative as and effective as getting sub subscribers uh, the right way. So um, this, this right here, um, there, there, there's a couple things that I would do. Uh, 
<laughs> it's really important. You either need to write this down or rewatch this a couple times. I would literally go through every how to uh, DIY uh, questions that deal with woodworking and I would make a list and I would make that the biggest list you've ever made. I mean, the bigger, the better. And then I would literally go search that list and see what shows up on Google, on YouTube. And I literally link videos and websites, uh, blogs, um, and social media to those keywords. Uh, ba but basically it's a key question. Um, and I, I would like start seeing what is said, what people have questions on. And then I would actually make a content uh, strategy plan, which would be answering the common questions that people have in your video that other people didn't necessarily do in their content. And so it's more complete, right? And I would 100%, 100%, I would take the time to um, uh, make sure that people knew uh, that they could subscribe. Uh, some of the people that are coming in for how to, they don't necessarily subscri subscribe. So you need to explain to them. I would do it at the beginning of the video. I would do it uh, at the end of the video. And then that way I say, hey, you know, I have tips coming out every week or whatever you have. Yeah, you know, it looks like weekly. I have tips coming out a couple times a week. Uh, go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss the next, you know, amazing tip. You know, and that's a way to grow that audience. And, and then two, you're using that traffic. So I would assume your traffic source right now is dealing with uh, your um, how-to content as well. And it's coming from, from uh, search. Uh, so I'd want to ramp up the search because there's a lot more search terms that would get more views. And then I would take that search term exactly what it is and what it shows up in a lot of blogs and a lot of videos and make that your title. And then I would rearrange it a little bit for your description, uh, that first paragraph, and then add a couple another, uh, you know, information from there. And, and, and then I would add some more deep and depth to your description as well. Okay. That's what I do. And, and literally uh, watch out for the video I have coming out on tags, super important for tags, uh, especially now. Um, and it's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger uh, with that. And it's gonna be more important. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and um, pull in some other questions. I know a lot of you are on here that did not do a super chat. That doesn't mean that you're bad or anything like that. I just wanted to give super chats first. We did quite a few super chats. I appreciate those. Um, but before we do that, this, this section where I'm answering your questions is brought to you by VidSummit. Now, VidSummit is a conference that I put on every year. Uh, we do it in LA. Um, and VidSummit is my baby. And what I mean by that is I, I literally want to learn from the best people in the world. So I bring them together uh, all in one venue and we talk about strategies. There's not a lot of glamor, but we, we have amazing content. Uh, it's where we really bring the top YouTube influencers and video influencers video marketers and brands. And we literally share strategies about how to grow on YouTube, uh, how to explode on YouTube and how to leverage YouTube to make more money. And the whole reason why I started the vid summit literally is to help creators develop a brand and make a ton more money. And that's why I do the vid summit. So, uh, those that are interested in that, you can go to vidsummit.com. Uh, you can hit reserve your ticket. Um, but if you notice right by the ticket, it says Amazon, um, right there. Do you see that? <clears throat> Amazon is our partner for vid summit. This is not a small thing. This is a big thing. And Amazon has some pretty amazing things that they're doing. Um, and you want to do that now, if you can't make it in person, well, guess what? We just today just made the virtual ticket more affordable, uh, more affordable for you. Uh, and it doesn't matter. You can watch uh, the vid summit in your pajamas if you're not able to come. And literally, I would encourage you guys to come because of that. But if you can't, there's an option for you. And the whole reason why we we reduced the the, the price for the virtual ticket was 100% because there were so many creators that was out of their budget, and I wanted to make it more affordable. Uh, there are some costs. There's some heavy costs and things that need to be involved. Uh, but we have some amazing uh, speakers. Um, and let me kind of go through the speaker lineup real quick. Um, we, we have Peter McKinnon. 
Uh, Pete's going to come and talk about he, how he's grown a, a huge audience and doing what he loves. Uh, from there, we have Sean Duras. We have Sarah Dietschy that's coming. Sarah's just super, super cool. We have What's Inside, Daniel Markham. We even have the CEO of VidCon, Jim Lauterback. Melissa Hunter, who's one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, we have Adam coming. We have Bitten Crane, who's the managing director of Harmon Brothers, who do some pretty amazing uh, commercials. Uh, we have uh, Luria Petrucci, uh, known as Callie Lewis. <laughs> well, formerly known as Callie Lewis. We have myself, Rachel Farnsworth, Dennis Yu, who does a lot of Facebook uh, ad buying. We have Stephen Scherer. We have Chad Wildclay. We have Tim Schmoyer. We have Zach Nilsson, who does Jerry Rig Everything. Travis Chambers, Rob Sandy, uh, R- uh, Ricky Ray Butler, and a whole slew of other creators. And uh, this is something that you're able to do. Go to vidsummit.com for sure to get your, uh, your ticket, um, whether your ticket, your virtual ticket, whatever it may be. Um, I, I had someone uh, reach out to me and, and I, I gave him, you know, we kind of DM'd on Facebook and, and uh, uh, a Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, that's great. You can just go to uh, twitter.com forward slash Daryl Eves. But this, this, this person reached out and says, you know, um, you know, VidCon was pretty amazing and it was good to hear your, your presentation. And he goes, but, but seriously, the other presentations is kind of hit and miss at, at, at VidCon. Is Vid Summit any different? And I'm like, uh, yes, <laughs> because number one, I personally vet everyone that's getting on stage and I, I personally see what they're actually presenting. And if I'm not interested, I don't let them present. Uh, Cause I'm the audience. I, I want to learn. The whole reason why I started it is because I want to learn from the best in the industry. So I invite the best to come teach me and you guys get to be along with me as well. Uh, the cool thing about it too, is the conference, we will never go bigger than the, the, the 1300 people, like 13 to 1500 people. Uh, right now we're, we're capping out at 1300, uh, in person, uh, just because there's a sense of openness and a culture that we've created where people are willing to share more openly. Uh, and it's not so big that you get lost and there's a lot of competing things. Like Vid Summit's it. There's not much around. We do it at, at Weston LAX. If you've ever been to the LAX, there's not much to do for at least 45 minute drive. <laughs> you know, it could be like three miles, but a 45 minute drive uh, to get anywhere. And and that's why we do it there. And it's been, it's been awesome. So I'd encourage you to either come in person or get your virtual ticket. All right, let's go ahead and do the next uh, question here. Um, so if you have questions, go ahead and put it in the comments. We're going to pull these up. These are not super chat questions. These questions are brought to you by VidSummit at VidSummit.com. Um, do, do, do. Okay. Here is the next question that's coming up. And it's coming from the Blues Clues channel. Uh, do you like the Blues Clues channel, Daryl? Um, yeah. So the Blues Clues channel, uh, I, like I, Blues Clues. Do I like Blues Clues? My daughter was obsessed when she was a little kid with Blues Clues. Uh, it was it was massive, and um, it, 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 there was a very traumatic uh, moment in her life when Steve left and Joe came in. It just never was the same. Joe was great. Don't get me wrong, but that's where it all went downhill for her. Okay. Um, so if you have a question, go ahead and put that in there. Um, I'm trying to go back to some older questions, um, but it doesn't know. So if, if I miss your question, put it in again. Um, it's making me uh, sort in a weird way. Um, okay. So this next one is a great question. Um, uh, from the Mary. Okay. It says question about, uh, inconsistency ads playing on monetized videos on YouTube. Uh, okay. On, on YouTube, um, help. I was told that making ad revenue go up. The revenue is based on which watch time and which videos I have ads for. So let's go ahead and throw that question up there. Why I answer it. So here's the thing, and this is really important. Um, ads have everything to do with your content, your niche, and, and you know, how brand safe you are. Um, and they're looking at a couple things and where the adpocalypse have actually come from is the adpocalypse came from some content creators putting some questionable things and brands ads is coming on and they didn't want to necessarily be associated with it. So uh, now there's tools for brands to kind of select what videos to go on and off. 
I could tell you the number one thing, the number one thing that, that YouTube does to pick up to see if it's going to be demonetized or if it is, um, uh, you know, basically going to be not brand safe, uh, or if it is brand safe, it's going to get lower CPMs, uh, per views would be tags and title and also description. So that information is where it's pulling it in, but it's also getting a transcription of what's being said. So there's a couple words that I was saying in the video that weren't those words, because I don't say those words because they're very vulgar words, but YouTube for some reason was associating a specific word, which I don't want to say <laughs> with another word. And so getting your stuff uh, transcribed is really, really important to do. Um, and, and make sure you upload that caption. Okay. The next thing, uh, this is, this is coming back from blues clues. We're having a little dialogue here. Um, and I don't know why that's like throwing the channel down there. That's really weird. Um, do you suggest live streaming blues clues episode? Hey, you know what blues clues, if you're the actual official channel of blues clues, go to my YouTube channel, uh, to my, uh, uh website. Uh, schedule a consultation. Uh, I'm more than give you a strategy for that. Um, you know, it, it's great content. If, you, if you're the actual um, holder of the IP and, and you're, you're building that, you know, it's the official one. Yeah, definitely reach out to me. Um, I'd be more than happy to do a consult. I'm very familiar with the space. Uh, did a lot of consults over the years for similar types of channel. Okay. Uh, so if you have questions, um, this one is a statement. Uh, Dr. Stein, <laughs> you know, YouTube, definitely the closed captioning definitely has a lot of bad, bad, bad words. It's true. They have a lot of bad words that I'm telling you right now. Um, every single time that you say certain things, it doesn't matter if you upload a new caption file or not. YouTube's always going to do it unless you upload a new caption file. It's their system. It's kind of weird. It's not learning as much. Um, okay. The next one is coming from uh, Breath Fitness TV. Um, oh, oh, that, well, I was gonna do it. I thought it was a question, it wasn't. So, dang it, we, we almost had it there. Um, do, do, we're, we're, we're looking at the page in the next hour. Uh, so we're not doing channel reviews, we're looking at page quite yet. Uh, the ones that we'll be doing is off Super Chat uh, for sure. And we'll be doing some super chat questions, but these, ch these, uh, questions are being answered by vid summit. Um, vid summits, a conference I put on every year in LA vidsummit.com. And I'm like literally, um, going through questions right now. Oh, wow. Um, here we go. Okay, this one comes from Card Perfect Magician. I have a magic teaching channel. I want to edit my videos, but I don't want people thinking it's a camera trick. What should I do? Help, 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 help. Ask Daryl. Um, let's go ahead and put that on the screen there. Um, so here's the thing. It's like there are certain things that you need to do uh, to engage an audience. And you know that the audience would think, oh, you just edited the video um, differently. And, uh, that's where it's bad. So what I would do is do this. Maybe you show the trick without an edit. So it's just straight, you know, you're, you're doing the trick. It's really engaged. Uh, you show it. And then when you do a replay of it, then you're able to uh, cut it the way or vice versa. Like you can test it out that way. So I've seen it where, you know, it, it's just, straight on. And when they show the replay that they can see, oh, this was live. This was no camera trick. Then you go into a little bit more detail, of, you know, getting your face, getting other people's reactions, so on and so forth. Um, really, really important to do that. Camera work is key. Um, and, and it's something that you, you definitely need to look at for sure. Uh, but you want to make sure that your audience is not being turned off because they think it's fake. Okay. All right, going to the next questions. Um, okay, here's here's one from uh, War Stew. Um, why are views uh, why do views drop the first hour after being uploaded? Sometimes that's a great question. Uh, this this question 
um, is is pretty interesting. Um, and let me tell you why I find it interesting. It's because it's true. There are some views that just drop. They just tank right after um, it's released. And what happens is it goes out to notify some of your subscribers. Does it notify all your subscribers? Notify some. And based on what they do, if they see basically, oh, here's a video from this channel, they don't click on it. You don't get a, a, a higher click-through rate. YouTube says, ah, this is not a very good video. Or the people that are watching it, watch it for 30 seconds. They're not watching the whole thing. Oh, this is not a very good video. Uh, that's what YouTube's actually looking at. Um, what When you release a video, it's gonna go out to your subscribers first, and it's gonna be suggested on your videos first. And that is all based on um, how well those two things are, are there. So, you know, having good thumbnails is key. Having a good title is key. Um, but also making sure your content is pulling people into the story is ultimately key as well. Okay. Um, this one's coming from uh, PJ and it's saying, uh, what does clickbait mean in your opinion? And this is from TJ, not PJ. Sorry about that, TJ. Um, so clickbait. Um, so look, uh, clickbait is literally getting people the bait and switch. So what that means is that you're saying it's one thing and it's really not that thing. So saying, oh my gosh, I just threw a football over a mountain. <laughs> and that is your title. That is your thumbnail. They go ahead and click on that and you don't throw a football over the mountain. You don't even try. That would be considered clickbait. Or I just, you know, or it could be, oh my gosh, my girlfriend just broke up with me. And your girlfriend in the video doesn't even break up with you at all. Doesn't even do anything like that. Oh, that is clickbait. That is deceiving what that is. That is against terms of service. Now, doing a clickable title or doing a clickable thumbnail would be this. What if you're like, I quit, dot, 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 dot. Is that clickbait? Well, when they click on it, it says, look, I quit. I am quitting smoking, <laughs> whatever it is. I don't smoke. I'm a Mormon. Don't do those things. But you know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing about it is when you say you quit, you know, you can give more information in it. Make sure in the description and the tags, you're explaining what that is uh, because then it says, oh no, this is what, what it's related to or so on. Um, there's a YouTuber that I was looking at that says he quit and they were quitting YouTube uh, for two months and they're going out on a tour uh, things like that happen. Uh, you just got to give it context. I don't think it's clickbait. It's just being a smart marketer that know that that's a clickable title uh, and it's not doing it because they really were quitting. Okay. Um, it's called lying. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay. Um, do, do. This this next one is coming. Okay. So it's saying, uh, Astral. Uh, does the impact of my SEO, if I re-edit my descriptions and, and title, what does it do? Okay, so what happens, this is a very, very important thing. Uh, when you actually edit your title, your description, your tags, YouTube literally pulls you out of search and says, what is this video about? And then re-puts you in search. So it does a re-evaluation. It could take, you know, it used to take days. It could take, you know, hours now. Um, and I'm here to tell you that I did that on multiple videos. I was ranked for certain keywords that I was the number one spot and I did that and I got out of the number one spot and I was on the second page. So for me, I just never mess with the meta information unless I have to. And the only reason I have to is if it's not getting good views. Okay. Um, all right. Next one. Great question here is, uh, what is the best uh, video editing software? Um, so here is the best editing uh, software. I've done a, a video on this for sure. I, and it really just depends. Like I, I would just do whatever's free. And there's a lot of free solutions out there. Uh, if you're on mobile device, there's a lot of free editing things that you're able to do. Um, <clears throat> personally, I, I like... Uh, Final Cut Pro, and we use Adobe products, Premiere, and, and After Effects, and stuff like that. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, <clears throat> it, it doesn't matter what you edit on. It just matters about your content. 
And as you get more skill with the editing, then it would be better to you know improve. So I'd see whatever you can do free. If there's anything on your uh, machine that's free, if you have a Mac or a PC, see what's free out there and, and go there. Uh, any of you that have a tip for him, go ahead and put that in the comments as well. Um, okay, this is a great question uh, from Techmasters. What does impressions and CTR mean in our analytics? So this being said, um, my, my thing is, is impressions is this. Uh, when your video goes out and it's in the YouTube feed or it's a suggested video, then uh, basically what happens is when, it, when it's seen by a viewer, that is an impression. When, it, when, when it's seen by a viewer, that's an impression. And if the viewer clicks on it, that is what they call a CTR, a click-through rate. And it would it, basically what YouTube's doing is seeing how many impressions and how many click-throughs, and they're giving you a percentage for that, okay? And the higher the percentage your click-through is, the more likely that YouTube's actually gonna promote the video. Now, depending on other metrics that YouTube's looking at, it's like, how, what's your average view duration? And how long are people engaging with your content? How many people start the video and end the video? A lot of those things that YouTube's looking at uh, to actually get that suggested out more. Okay, but that's what that is. Um, let's see. Um, these, these questions are going pretty quick, but let's go ahead. Uh, do the next one with, um, uh -oh, okay. Uh, okay. Because they have an audience that, okay. It looks like you're, there's a conversation. Dang, I thought this is what happens when you're actually doing reading comments. You're actually posting comments. You're all doing it live. I don't have anyone helping me I'm doing it from this lovely box right here. And, um, I'm trying to grab questions. And so I do apologize that, um, so if you have a question, go ahead and put it in there. These questions right now are being answered by vidsummit.com. It's a conference I put on every year in LA. Uh, you can get a virtual ticket. It's the lowest it's ever going to be. And it's just amazing. Uh, cheapest price. If you want to come in person, it's even better. Uh, that's something you're able to do. Okay. Um, all right. We, we love stories. Here we go. Coming in right now, um, how do I get uh, more people to click on my videos? I've noticed in uh, the YouTube beta, I get way more impressions than views. <laughs> that is so true. Um, and that was this. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so here's the thing is, at the end of the day, um, YouTube's going to test your content out there and you're going to get impressions. Um, the best way to actually get a view is to get them to click on it. So for me, if you don't have a good click-through rate and you have low click-through rate, um, that means your thumbnails suck. That means you need to do a better job on doing thumbnails. Now, I, I did a training on this. You can find it in the description below. Uh, well, I, I don't think it's in there now, but I'll put it in there. Uh, it's on how to get more views on YouTube. It's a recent video I did probably about a month ago. Um, it actually goes to a longer training that's over an hour. Um, and I go in depth on thumbnails and understanding click-throughs and impressions and so on and so forth. You'll definitely want to do that. Um, but get, get good thumbnails. That's the, the first step. The next step would be making your, your content, uh, will warrant that thumbnail if it's great. Okay. Um, let me let me do something here. I want to I want to check the uh, super chats real quick. I want to do these super chat questions, and I'm and I, I hope that uh, you guys are being patient. Um, appreciate all your patience on this, you guys with super chat. This next one is coming from Chris. Um, so Chris vlogs. Okay, so so it says like I'm just doing everything. How do I act? Oh. That's weird. Okay, how about this? There we go. <laughs> hey oh, <laughs> we got it there. Hit the wrong button because that's what you do when you're live. Okay, uh, okay. This one comes from Chris um, saying, you know, I'm trying to do whatever I can. I just seem can't seem to get ahead. Um, Chris, at the end of the day, um, there's there's a couple things to really succeed on YouTube. Um, I I truly do believe anyone can succeed on YouTube. Um, I've literally helped 21 channels start from nothing, get over a million subscribers. Um, you know, some of the channels that we own, 
um, some that we partner with, and we you know go from there, and others that we've just helped. Uh, I've learned one thing: if your content sucks, you're not going anywhere. It's that simple. Now that being said, how do you improve your content? Well, first off, it might suck to some person, right? But it might be the most amazing video to another. So the first thing that you need to do is who are you trying to attract? What audience are you trying to, to attract with that video? What type of viewer are you looking to attract? That's what I would I try to figure out who that, that viewer is. Put them in your mind and make videos for that viewer. And the more that you do that, there's other viewers out there like that and similar to that. And if it engages that one viewer and they think it's amazing, uh, you just want to start improving. What do they like about the video? How are they engaging? You can look in analytics and see, hey, you know, they rewound this part or, you know, the, they had a really good retention on this video. What made this video better? And you're starting to digest that. And ultimately, end of the day, I can literally say, um, and I'll say this boldly and live, but the reason why most content creators on YouTube don't succeed on YouTube is because their content literally sucks. Uh, there's no storytelling. There's no creativity. It's just blah, 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 right? Now, that's harsh, and I believe that anyone can learn the skill of really making powerful videos, and you just have to be able to analyze and adjust, but you need to know who you're talking to. You need to know who your, your target audience is. Um, I, like, I, I, I've done some training and uh, other stuff like that, and, and people, uh, there, there's like this one person that reaches out to me uh, you know, off and on, and they're like, hey, I'm doing this on my YouTube channel now. I'm like, well, weren't you just doing something else a couple months later or earlier? And a couple something else and a couple months earlier? Why are you changing so much? Like they, they literally change about every month of the direction of their channel. I'm like, they're never gonna succeed on YouTube ever until they can stop doing that and focus in hyper focused on a niche and engage with that viewer on a level that's deep. And doing vlogs is great, but doing vlogs with uh, a purpose, doing a vlog with uh, you know understanding the audience in mind will do a lot better. Uh, and I, I, I can prove that time and time again. Like I said, I started 21 channels from nothing, get over a million subscribers, uh, talking 34 billion video views. I think I know what I'm talking about a little bit, okay? Um, great. Let's do the next one. This is the next super chat. Thank you for this super chat. If you put a super chat question in there, they go first. Um, this one is coming from the UFO God. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, and they're wanting how, how to actually do a hero video. Now, for those that don't know what a hero video is, a hero video is where you put a little bit more time energy, creativity, money into the creation uh, and the thought process and the marketing for a specific video. Um, and, and then two, it's like looking at what would work. So what I would do, uh, I would do a lot of recon and look at what type of UFO videos uh, got a lot of traffic and a lot of uh, subscriber engagement, viewer engagement, and seeing what those type of products or uh, videos are. And I'd like to think, okay, what would be a great, uh, you know, follow up to this or something, my spin or my take on it and go from there. Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's about content and it's about, um, it's about knowing your audience. There is a specific audience that are attracted to these types of videos. Um, I'm here to tell you, I mean, if History Channel literally puts these types of programs on there, you can go to Netflix and find these types of programs. There's an audience. And once you understand what the audience wants, then you're able to uh, figure out the best way uh, to do it. So let me give you uh, a hero video idea. Okay. So what if you actually, and I don't know where in the world you're at, but what if you actually went to Roswell, New Mexico and you, you're doing a video, but a video series of talking to people and, and getting their insights and so on and so forth, doing something like that. What if you went to Area 51, uh, you can't go to Area 51, but you can go outside of that, and you, know, you, you talk to people and engage with people. I mean, that's something that people would do uh, forever. In fact, 
we were in New Mexico and I, I was trying to convince my family to go to Roswell just, just so we could say we'd been there. I'm, I'm not like that type of person that I'm like, hey, let's go do that. And I got shot down and we didn't go there. Um, <laughs> it was only like an hour away. I'm like, let's just go do it. Let's just go eat at the diner or something, you know, take some pictures. But they, they didn't think that was a good idea. But there are people out there that would just love that content and you can figure out what would they ask? I, I try to figure out how to engage with my audience of what questions you'd want to ask or what they'd want to see when you're out there. Um, that's, that's just an idea. That's just an idea. Okay. Um, all right. Or you could, or you could do this. Here's another hero uh, idea. You could do man on the street and literally record people and ask them if they think that there's a UFO conspiracy or UFOs are real and getting real people to react to it. Right. And letting them, you know, create some amazing content for you. Okay. That's a really good idea. I like that one better. Okay. The next one is to uh, path of happiness. Let me go to their channel here in a second. Uh, I started a, a channel two months ago using uh, YouTube ads for traffic. Do you have any v best practices for YouTube ad advertising? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, this is something that uh, very, very passionate about. Um, I do a lot of ad buying for non-related YouTube channel stuff. Um, like just ads that you'll see, you know, going to, for some brand or business or product. And the thing for me is, is this, um, doing ads can have a negative effect if you don't do it the right way. So the right way of doing an ad is you can either do a true view ad, which will get you views, or you can do a discovery ad, which will just basically get you impressions. And as people click on it to watch it, then you actually get a view. Which ones would I do? I'd only do discovery. So I'd only do discovery ads. And then I'd look at keywords and I'd look at specific content channels that you wanna show up against. And I'd figure out what those are and that's what I'd push from there. Um, we were able to get, like, we just did a test because I'm like, when that first thousand, um, you know, the new limit for the YouTube partner program, I wanna see how quick we get a thousand subscribers on a new channel uh, and the minutes watched. Uh, we did it in about 12 hours um, and, and we did it with, through advertising. And it, it's possible your content needs to be really, really good and you need to know what you do, where to place the stuff, but we were able to do it in about 12 hours. That being said, of that, that traffic uh, was good, but the thousand subscribers, they weren't engaged. They weren't engaged like someone that you know found me organically. Um, it's just, it's just not there. And the next thousand, like we would release videos after we turned off advertising and we'd probably get 10 views. So that was 10 more views than we did, but that was a heck of a lot of, you know, effort to go in to get those thousand subscribers. They don't even watch the video. So, you know, now I, there might be other case studies out there. There might be things that you need to, to look at, but I, I don't know. I, you know, for me, I'm just, I'm very cautious for sure. Um, Little Squish, I am an art, uh, a small art channel. My very first video is over a year old, performs the best. Can I capitalize on this or is this too late? Uh, let's go ahead and go to the channel here. So you're able to see that. Um, the, the first video, oh, this is really cool. I like this. So your first video is your biggest. Yeah, I mean, I, I would look to see why that one's getting views, how that's getting views. So you can actually go um, into, uh, you could actually go into um, analytics and look at traffic sources. Uh, my, my thing is, if, if you can honestly, I'm just, I'm just pulling up some, I'm just pulling up someone here real quick. Uh, I, I think the big thing is looking at um, uh, where this traffic's coming from and, and figuring out from there. You can do a follow-up video, it's not too late. Um, if it's still getting views, you can always piggyback off those views. Uh, something really, really important to look at. Um, my, my thing, and I'm just trying to find a channel here real quick. Um, you, you can definitely, um, 
I just subscribed to so many different channels and I just got to find it real quick. Um, but you, you can definitely get uh, more traffic if you find creators that are doing it right. And I'm going to show you a creator that is definitely doing it right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Sorry, I would have pulled this up earlier, but uh, okay. I'm just pulling this up. Um, similar uh, thing. This is one of my one of my best friends in the whole wide world. Uh, I just love Ola so much. Um, her and her husband Machik. Um, they're from Poland. Uh, th this is definitely Polish views. Uh, you can see she has 400,000 subscribers, which is humongous in Poland. Uh, there's not that many people in Poland that speaks Polish, and hers are in Polish. Um, I, I watch her content. Um, she's really, really good. So she does uh, illustrations uh, and so on. You definitely want to check her out. She does subtitle everything. I don't speak Polish, but she uh, does subtitle everything. Uh, get some ideas of her her content. What she does the best, I can tell you this right now, is her pacing is really good. See how she edits and see how she engages, see how she illustrates. And I literally look at doing stuff similar uh, to her. Um, I would also look at your first original video, see who's actually watching it, who's commenting, see if there's certain comments that they're saying and make sure that when you do related videos, you're able to do that. Uh, I would also put it in a playlist together with the old video and the new video. I'd also uh, you know, push traffic to the old video in the sense of making that a card uh, so you can get some new traffic coming in or hey, you haven't seen this. If you have the community tab, you could actually uh, repost that video in the community tab, re-engage the old audience uh, saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing another video like this, what do you think? And getting that to engage, getting more views uh, from there. Uh, but ultimately, I would go check out Ola's channel. Um, super smart, one of the coolest people I've ever met. A great YouTuber. Uh, yeah, you won't go wrong there for sure. Um, and she, like I said, she does everything captioned in um, in English as well. So the next super chat's coming from Jay Malone. Thank you, Jay, the, for the five dollars. Let's go ahead and head to your channel. You just gave me a super chat. You didn't necessarily uh, leave a question. If you do have a question and you want to do a super chat. I will literally answer those questions. Uh, you can go ahead and check Jay out here. Uh, it looks like he does drone photography tech and more. You just gained another subscriber because I'm always interested in that type of stuff. And I, I, I definitely would love to see what's going on there um, and, and see what you're doing. So uh, definitely thank you so much for that super chat. So if you're interested in that, uh, we can go from there now. Uh, just to let you know, we are going to be doing some channel reviews that's coming up here just momentarily. Uh, if you want to do a channel review, you got to put that super chat in there. Those are the ones I'm doing first. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely hit that as well. Uh, just coming on here now, um, I want to go and explain um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm 100% I'm passionate about YouTube. I am. I know that YouTube's been frustrating for me and a lot of creators, but ultimately it can change lives. And uh, it's a lot of money um, that, that can be made and it can bring a lot of money for your own business, your own family, and you can create you know teams and their families. It can support a lot of people. It's a very lucrative uh, business to be in when you do it right. Um, I'm here to tell you that... Um, I, I, I've been on YouTube since 2005. Um, in 2006, I got really serious at YouTube. 2007, got super serious at YouTube. And it just escalated where my whole business, that's all we do. We do video, online video, but we're just really, really good at YouTube and, and growing audiences. And I've worked with a lot of creators. I've worked with, uh, worked, worked with a lot of uh, smart people along the way. Uh, we've helped channels start from nothing, get over uh, millions of subscribers. We've helped 21 of those. Some of them we own, some of them we helped. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's a consistent theme that I learned that you need to understand what works now, not what works three years ago, not what works two years ago, not what works six months ago. You need to know what's now. Um, I've been a student of YouTube, of online marketing, 
of online video um, my whole my whole career. Uh, like the, I eat, drink, sleep this stuff, and I want to learn, 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 learn as much as I can. Now I'm asked quite a bit, and people pay me a ton of money to travel around the world to go speak at their conference about video marketing. Uh, you know, if you've ever seen that pooping unicorn ad, I was executive producer, project lead, worked with the talented Harmon brothers on it. Um, and I've done a lot of different strategies with audience development. So I'm asked quite a bit to go speak, uh, whether as a keynote or whatever, I go to these conferences and I started to notice a theme that these conferences, they might have one or two really, really good talks, but a lot of it was just panels. I literally don't like panels. Like it's like the worst thing in the world for me to sit through a panel because there's no preparation. It's just ad lib. There's no strategy or tactic. It's like, Hey, yeah, I like cats. Cats are fun. Make cat videos on YouTube and you'll get millions of views. That's not a strategy I want to hear. You know, I want to know tactic strategies and it got so intense with this and I got so frustrated. So I decided the only way that you can fix something and you want to learn, and I wanted to learn from people that don't necessarily, they're not YouTubers, but they're behind the YouTubers, some of the most smartest people in the world. And I wanted to learn from them. So I actually started a conference called Vid Summit. And this is where I literally invited the smartest people in the industry uh, to come and present. And I'm here to tell you, I invite marketers and those support creators and video creators. And all I care about is, is learning from the best in the industry. Um, it's like this guy right here, Peter Hollins, big YouTuber, uh, smart marketer. Like he, he did a strategy that he shared with me of how um, he was able to, to get to the billboard charts, the top of the billboard charts um, from laying in bed because <laughs> he had surgery, had hip surgery, had to get his hip replaced or whatever. And he was able to get to the top of the charts and he did it all automatic. Super smart guy. Um, you know, he comes and shares strategies. He's been doing it for years. He comes as an attendee or he's speaking. It really depends on the year. Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, it's getting the people that I want to learn from in the, uh, that, that presents and, you know, these are the people that I want to learn from. I want to learn from Peter McKinnon. He is probably the best storyteller I've seen on YouTube in a long time. Uh, Sean Duras, uh, Sarah Dietschy, amazing storyteller. I, I, this, this lady right here, Kristen Hills, I'm here to tell you that I want to learn from her. <laughs> she has a massive audience outside of YouTube, massive. And, and she makes mega brand deals across the board. Why did I invite her to speak? I invited her to speak because I want to learn. I wanted to learn from Daniel Markham. Daniel's just the nicest guy in the whole world. He has an amazing YouTube channel. It, his channel is so awesome. It's so brilliant. I want to learn from him. I want to learn his SEO trending strategies. So what I do is I put on this conference every year and I started with the first year and I wanted, I basically put everyone that I wanted to learn from on stage and we taught each other and we discussed it. What was really cool that happened that first year, I took all the speakers and we went out to dinner and I says, this is what I want to do. And in three years, this is where I want to be. And everybody's like, oh man, that's, that's pretty bold. I says, no, we can do this. Uh, I, I want to keep this culture of sharing information because collectively, if we share information, if we're more open source, then we can take it to the next level. And I says, this is what I want to do. Next year, I want to bring in top YouTube creators. And I, I says, we're, we're marketers. Here's the top YouTube creators. Let's go ahead and do that. And I wanted to bring in agencies and brands. And we did that. And this last year was amazing. So that was year four. We're coming into year five. And it's like an amazing conference. You definitely got to check it out. Vidsummit.com. Um, you got to gotta check that out. Um, amazing, amazing conference. Um, I was like hitting the wrong button. <laughs> there we go, vidsummit.com. We have agencies, brands, creators, uh, people that you've never heard of, but I can tell you right now, people that you need to know, because <laughs> I'm here to tell you that I personally handpicked 
the smartest people in the industry because I want to learn from them. So if you want to learn from them, you can come in person. It's October 9th through the 12th. You can go to vidsummit.com to get the, the details. If you can't make it in person, well, guess what? We're live streaming. We are live streaming at the cheapest rate that we can possibly do. And you can literally get a virtual pass, be in your pajamas, watch the, the, the live stream. We, we're also uh, live streaming to mobile this year. Um, and, and we could before, but we actually have a mobile app that's developed that we're doing. And, and basically, uh, this app, you can go and see the live stream wherever you're at. You can just listen to it, whatever, and it's on the go. Um, and and we, are, we have four rooms that are going on at once, and then we have the main keynote area. Um, there's like four different live streamings that ha are happening all simultaneously. Um, and that's something you definitely, definitely don't want to miss out. The thing that I'm most excited about is who's partnering with us. Uh, our main partner is Amazon. And I'm here to tell you, <laughs> if there's a company you ever want to watch and every company you want to get to know and understand, Amazon makes a lot, make me a lot more money. I spend a lot of money with Amazon, but it's like Amazon's an amazing company and it's going to make creators a lot more money. And there's a lot of cool things that are coming out that are not announced that I wish I could just say, but come to the Vid Summit. This is what it's all about. You can either come in person or live. Okay. So this is brought to you by Vid Summit. Let's go ahead and start to shift to channel consultation. So if you want to get a channel consultation, now is the time to go ahead and put that in the super chat. We're gonna literally digest the channels, see what's going on. Uh, unfortunately, because of the nature of live streams, we can't necessarily bring in video like I want because of copyright issues and I don't have that. So if you want a channel evaluation, this is the time. You have my attention to do this. We're going to do some that are super chat. And when that super chat dries up, we might do a few uh, other ones that are um, a channel review paid for by vidsummit.com, the conference I put on. I'm not really paying for it. It's just they're basically, yeah. I want people to come to vidsummit, right? Okay, here we go. So ready for the Super Chat channel evaluation? We are doing it, let's see here. Um, we're gonna do one question before we do this. And then that gives you a little bit of time. There's a little bit of delay in here uh, and we'll get the Super Chat going here. So let me go ahead. Uh, this comes from uh, Design Course. A month ago I started uh, uh, URLing or, or, or uploading, I guess, um, four to five times a week because I noticed uh, views and subs uh, have grown a lot. I wanted to build momentum. The problem, earnings, views have gone down. Should I go back to less? Okay, so design course, no. Um, generally, views and money and all that other stuff go way down in July. Everything is trending, um, and you got to know when the high months are, when the low months are. Let's go ahead and go to your YouTube channel, see the type of content that you're actually doing. Um, which are doing courses there. Um, it looks like a lot of this stuff is um, you can learn from uh, posting frequently is just make your content really good. Um, and then don't worry about uh, don't worry about the ad revenue. The ad revenue uh, fluctuates from month to month. That's something that you need to, to keep in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and get these channel evaluations. And the first channel evaluation, this, the first YouTube channel evaluation is my own channel. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I, I, was th I was debating whether to do this or not because uh, you're not my target avatar, but there's not that many people watching right now, so I think we'll be okay. Um, who would like to see a channel evaluation of my own channel, right? Would you? Go ahead and put it in the comments. Let's see if we want to do that. If you want a channel evaluation, do that. Let's go ahead and evaluate uh, my channel here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, this is something that all of us uh, all of us need to do. I'm going to go ahead and put the link in there here as well. All right. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it now. Okay. So here is uh, my new channel with my partners. Um, there is a story behind this channel and how it actually got started. So we're at uh, 4,800. We started May 30th. Uh, we were doing twice a week until last week we started uh, going up to 
um, to uh, basically, oh, th three times a week. Um, let me hit refresh because I think we're, I think we have a video out. Let's see here. Should have a video that got released. There's the new video. There we go. Um, so, so basically, here's the channel. Uh, how this got started is this guy right here. His name's Harbor. And Harbor, uh, I, I was looking for a personal assistant and someone that would travel with me. And I, I put out this recommendation and a friend of mine uh, says, look, this kid is pretty amazing. Um, he's a good videographer, has a lot of hope. Uh, you might want to contact him. So I call this guy up, says, hey, you know, I'm looking for, you know, someone to follow me around the world, travel, you know, work hard, whatever. Uh, I'd li like to meet you if you're interested in this and let's, let's chat. So we actually went and had some little taquitos, little, little teeny tacos. And I remember going into this place, uh, one of my favorite places to eat in the world. And I was sitting down and here he came in and this kid came in, sat down, you know, for a job interview. And, and I just got to know him a little bit, just kind of his personality. And this is what I actually said. He says, look, you know, I, I came here to offer you a job, but I don't want to do that. And he's like, oh, okay, all right, we're ready to go. He's getting ready to get, get over there. No, wait, 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 wait. I says, I want to become your partner. He goes, okay, that sounds good. Well, you can give me half your business? I'm like, no, 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 no. I says, I want you to become a YouTuber. He's like, well, I don't know. That's not, that's not the thing for me. And I'm like, no, seriously, I want you to become a YouTuber because um, I think you got what it takes. And that's something that you can't teach someone. You either have it or you don't. You have that personality and engagement. And I know what audience you need to. So Harbor, and this is Harbor right here. Um, he goes, okay, let's do it. So I hired him. I says, you, but the only thing is, is you've got to work for me for a year. Okay. And the next week um, is, is my vid summit, Harbor. But let's have you start the week after. He says, no, let me come to your vid summit. I'll help out. I'm like, oh man, it's just so busy. I don't have time to train you. And he goes like, I'll just come, you know, I'll volunteer. I'll see what's going on. I says, okay, that's great. So he actually came as my assistant at vid summit. Uh, he came to vid summit and his mind was freaking blown. Uh, vid summit, like I said, is a conference I put on every year. Uh, and it clicked for him that these creators on YouTube, these creators, these YouTube creators can have a very powerful influence over the world, positive, powerful influence. And he goes, Okay, I get it, I get it. So we started to talk ideas the week after we got back from Vid Summit, and every one was just like coming up with ideas for his channel, you know, coming up with ideas his channel. And he goes, you know, Daryl, um, he goes, can we? We're, we're heading up to to Salt Lake to work with a client. Is it okay? I mean, we're in Provo. Can I go visit my brother? Or he didn't say my brother, my twin. I go, wait. I go, shut the front door. I go, you have a twin? And he goes, yeah. And I go. And he looks like you? And he goes, yeah. Does he act like you? Well, he goes, well, yeah, but sometimes he's better than me. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I've never heard a twin say that before. And I go, yeah, I got to meet this twin. And that's when I got introduced to his twin brother, Duran. Now, Duran's the guy that's like literally holding the shoe uh, like it's a telephone. And <laughs> when I met uh, Harbor or Duran for the first time, I had to do like the double take. I'm like, man, you guys are the same person. You know, Duran has a little bit longer hair, but man, the laughing, the, the, everything was just magnetic. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So he, we were chatting and so on and so forth. So at the end of that, I, I left and I was, we left the, uh, the dinner that we had and I'm like, Harbor, I says, can we ever convince your brother to start a YouTube channel with you? Like, we'll partner up. Like this, this is something like, this is called internet gold here. And he's like, oh, I don't know, man. He's, he's like a UI designer, uh, in school, you know, he's going to probably move to New York or something. I'm like, no, like, please no. Like if there's anything that we need to do is to get him convinced to, to be a part of it. And so anyway, after a couple months of coming up with ideas and concepts, um, they, 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 they decided, okay, well, we'll go ahead and do YouTube. And, um, this is when it started. Like literally, uh, we started, uh, in fe February ish. Um, and they literally were shooting videos in, in, uh, March and April and they just weren't very good. <laughs> the videos weren't very good. And I wouldn't, we, we, was, we weren't going to post it, but it was going through the process of, of creating content that will engage an audience. I understood the audience. I understood the, the stuff from there. So what I decided to do is uh, put together a plan. So the first thing that we did 
was we set a goal to get a thousand subscribers by ourselves. That's what we want to do. Thousand subscribers by ourselves. If we can do that, then we can move to stage two, which is uh, doing a collaboration and and getting a whole bunch of views to come in quickly, um, so that we can get become a YouTube partner. And then stage three is doing a lot more YouTube collaborations. And I said, if we can do that. We can good, and I want to do it in 30 days. And we're like, oh, okay, that's that's great. So uh, we got ready. Uh, videos were being shot that weren't up to par. Uh, we were look, we were talking a lot about strategy. We were talking about this. I've documented all this, guys. Uh, it will be in some training. It will be a paid training. Uh, this is called Road to a Million because I'm going to get a million subscribers on this channel. Uh, me and my partners are going to work really hard to make that happen. Um, and and we know our audience. We know our audience. We know our audience. And so it can happen. So that being said, um, we, we get ready to upload content and we put a content strategy together and uh, it, the videos weren't as well shot on the dialogue and there's a couple things there. We came back and analyzed and adjusted, okay? And then we released our first video. This, this, is, this, is, this is true stats, this is everything that's happened. I have a little Facebook group that I've been keeping everyone uh, up to date on this. This was our first video, insane, insane backflip uh, challenge, okay? Um, the thing about this video was uh, I reached out to a brand and I wanted the brand to do a brand deal. We literally had a brand willing to pay us money and um, they're like, okay, let's kind of get this approved through legal. So I got them to say yes to the money we went through legal and I says, well, we're uh, learning how to do uh, backflips on a roller skate or roller blades, roller skates that, that they probably don't want to be my partner now that I said skates, but anyway, roller skates, uh, but roller blades, uh, blades. And uh, basically they're doing backflips and landing on a trampoline or not trampoline, but a, a, a mattress. And I got a mattress company to agree to, to give us the mattress and give us some money. And I'm like, dude, this is a win. You know, legal heard about it says, not only no, but heck no. So they decided not to uh, give us any money. And so in this video, they literally had to go find a dumpster and they found the dumpster um, in the trash. <laughs> this is where they found the dumpster in the trash for everyone to see. I mean, it was just super, super crazy. And, and the thing about it made it a better video anyway, right? And what we wanted to do is, is really develop our, our pacing and our timing. We had no subscribers. Um, I didn't want to, to, to showcase it in my, um, in my groups because I wanted a very specific segmented video views coming in. And, and I turned it on. I like, we, we, we did what we're preaching and we're teaching and so on and so forth. And then we, we tried to find things that would get us views. I knew the trending things that were going on, which is Fortnite dance, dance challenge, uh, Nerf power mods, you know, pink, uh, you know, the pancake art, uh, scooter on water, which was a video that we shot. This is our first really good video that we shot. Um, you know, uh, five random things, giant slime bubble. You know, we're getting views off of, and these some are really good views off of a new thing. No, no paid advertising, no nothing, and then. Uh, then we got a thousand, um, we literally got a, a thousand subscribers. And I knew right then and there, it was time to do stage two. Is to stage two is get a whole bunch of views quickly so that we can submit our uh, partner application with YouTube to, to make money on these. And so during that time, I've developed a lot of relationships. And like at the end of the day, this is what you need to do. Get to know your YouTuber friends. Get to know the YouTuber friends that have the same audience. Then literally do, you know, bring value to them. Um, what I love about this, you can bring value in so many different ways. You can bring value in a way that Steve Yeager did where he only had a thousand subscribers or 500 subscribers or whatever it was and started uh, volunteering, being on people's uh, shoots, like being a grip, running and doing all the other stuff. And, and that's the value that he'd bring. And it ultimately had a relationship where they had the cell phone number uh, like he literally had my cell phone number and he was able to text me questions and I'd respond to him. I'd pick up the phone. Like anytime that he calls, literally, I will literally pick up the phone because I love that guy so much of what he does and who he is. And, and that, that relationship, if he asked for anything, I 100%, like I know he wouldn't ask me anything unreasonable and I'd give it to him. 
I mean, seriously. And so the, that's the type of relationships you want. And so with this one, we knew who our target dem demographics are. We understand our target audience. We understand the, the YouTubers that are there. I made a list of the YouTubers that we wanted to collaborate with and we're collaborating with them now. We're gonna grow. Like this will be a million subscriber channel. Um, so that's our first channel review. Uh, ultimately, if you want to see how it's done right, uh, you can go ahead uh, and see that right here. So first thing is the banner. Uh, hitting you with new videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So they know that new videos are coming out. We didn't put a time down because we're still trying to figure out the time. Um, you can see our thumbnails are out of, you know, off the charts. Um, you know, these, these, these thumbnails are what it takes to, to be successful. I'm telling you, um, if you can't get them to click, they're never going to watch your content ever, ever. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're building up an audience. We're getting, we're getting fans. We got 82 views. It's probably even more. We're getting fans, we're getting engagement, we're getting things happening on it. These kids are, are talented um, and that's what it takes. It's like literally knowing your audience and providing content that your audience wants. I guarantee you there'll be people that watch these, these videos and they're like, these guys suck. But then their kids will probably watch it and they're like, man, these guys are so engaging. These guys are smart. Man, these are, you know, these are YouTubers I wanna follow because certain content doesn't resonate with everyone, right? It's like, it needs to resonate really well with the, its intended audience. Okay, that's your first power tip and the first channel consultation. Um, also, there's one other thing. Uh, there's a comment right now, um, sub for sub, that just never works. Just don't even do it. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And I'm gonna hide that comment because I don't even want that around. Can, can one of the moderators um, hide that comment? Uh, it just doesn't work. It just never works. It just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. Yeah, they might get a subscriber, but really at the end of the day, it's all about the views, okay? Um, let's go ahead and get those super chats going. Super chat consultation. So if you want a super chat consultation, go ahead and put that super chat in there. We will be doing it. The higher the dollar amount, the longer that I will do the super chat for. So um, let's go to Paul Peck. Um, no, we already, did we already do that one? No, we didn't. Thanks Paul for doing the super chat there. Let's go ahead and head to your channel. Um, let's go ahead and uh, he wants uh, a channel review. So the first thing that I do is I try to figure out what your channel's about based off of a few key things. Okay, so I, I would assume you're trying to teach people how to do things on YouTube, do it yourself. Um, and, and, and right now, the first thing that I want you to fix is your banner. <laughs> it is all over the board. I don't know my eyes don't know where to go. Um, I understand what you're trying to do here, but let's just redo this banner. Um, what I would do, make it a white background that's textured, that's wall texture that you have. And then on the side of you on the side, take a new, new picture that's higher res and bigger and make a bigger picture of you spraying your stuff here. And then you can also do uh, like like the how-to weeklies. I don't know what this is. So I'd be very specific and say, hey, this is drywall repair, D you know, DIY, uh, you know, type stuff. Um, and be very, very specific for that, okay? Um, there might be a little bit more information here than I like. I like to keep it simple because it's at a glance. Uh, on mobile, I'll bet you this looks horrendous. And so you want to make sure that on mobile looks good because most of the people would be watching this on mobile while they're doing the, t the task. So they might have their, their iPhone or, or uh, iPad or device like that. Okay, so the next thing is um, I always look at the about. Looks like you have a great about section. I would assume that you have keywords in here, which you do have some in here. Um, you also have um the partner program you have your email you have different links which is good okay next thing i like to do is go to videos and i want to see your thumbnails thumbnails look pretty 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 okay um i would try to do um i i try i try a, a couple tactics of maybe putting not on every video just on few just like uh orange pill texture like diy orange pill texture just very good appealing uh, fonts on here. <coughs> I definitely do that because um, some of them might work. And and then two, 
Um, you know, action shots are really, really, really good. Um, I would definitely in your title, make sure that it, they know it's a, the DIY stuff. I do DIY. Uh, I would probably do DIY drywall, uh, repair probably on every single, probably DIY drywall or DIY drywall repair, something like the drywall repair on every title that you have. Um, and it might be drywall repair, uh, colon, and then how do you uh, do orange pill texture repair? Um, and then you might, it, it might interfere with how many things, you gotta be very careful with how many character size. Um, and it might be the question here first and then dash dry roll repair is what I'd probably do. Um, and then two, um, are you building up your own personal brand or would you change this one to drywall repair DIY, your channel name? Um, you know, I might consider that because this is the type of channel that it is. They're just coming for the tip and technique. Um, there you go. Fortnite drywall repair for angry gamers. Okay. You're getting creative. I, I like I like the creativity of the, the content for sure. Um I think the big thing would be is literally going through, um, you know, Paul, every, every question that people would have in drywall, I'd write them all down, put them in a Google doc or a Google sheet and literally do every video on it. And I would go through every blog, every website and see what it is. And that's what I would make my titles. Um, and I would look at the search volume for some of those. And some of them I would do over and over and over again. Uh, and just get more and more traffic out there because I would assume the bulk of your uh, views come from people wanting to learn and learn the tips and techniques um, and they're do-it-yourselfers and I would cater to that audience. Now, two, I, I haven't seen, and you might do this, I haven't seen where you're reviewing products. Um, I would start reviewing products, um, you know, and you might do this, but I, I don't see it right off the, the thing. So that way um, you can actually go to brands and say, look, if you want your products featured in mine, you know, give me free product or pay for it. Uh, I'd definitely be doing that consistently. Um, and then you, you do have an Amazon affiliate uh, program, uh, which is great, which is, which is, you know, fantastic. I would improve the thumbnails for sure. Um, you know, experiment a little bit with the text would be fine. Let's go and look at uh, some of your other your your other information. Um, let me go ahead and kick this over. So, add as we're lo uh, loading, I'm going to check your description. Description looks great. Um, it's very very rich. You have some very specific things that you use there, which is good. Um, let me refresh this. Your content might need to change. Like this is not a very good hook. I would I would do a better hook for sure. Um, and if you guys ever want this tool right here, if you go to tubebuddy.com forward slash go, this shows you the tags that you're using. And it gives me a little bit more information on, on the video that I always like to look at. Um, I don't see a subscribe link, my friend. I, I put a subscribe link for sure. Closer to the top, um, uh, there is a uh, auto subscribe. So like when someone clicks it, it automatically does the pop up. Um, I did a code or a video about the code in there somewhere. You can go to my website and find that, but uh, I would definitely do it that way or click on either uh, Harbor and Duran's channel or my channel and uh, you're able to see it when you hit subscribe, it'll pop up. Just copy and just change out the channel name with your, your channel name would be fine. Uh, that's definitely what I do. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely would do a different hook. Uh, welcome back to the channel in green doesn't necessarily do me anything. Um, and, and two, it's just like, yeah. Um, yeah. Your content seems to be okay, but I, I would definitely improve the content. This is a four by three ratio. I definitely do a 16 by nine for sure. Kind of roll from there. All right. Um, everyone go check out Paul, uh, his channel, uh, Paul Peck. That was the first channel review. Uh, like I said, the, the more, uh, money you give, the more in depth I'll give on it, but I'll, I'll give you my thoughts regardless of it. 
And those that can't afford to do it, it's okay, stick around. Because at the end of this training, at the end of this live stream, uh, vidsummit.com, which is an event I put on every year, uh, is sponsoring me doing some channel audits there as well that we can go from there. So this next one is from our buddy, Dr. Stein. Okay, so there's a couple things that I, 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 I do um, and I, then I notice immediately out of the gate. Um, I, I, understand, I understand that this is a good thumbnail by a lot of creators, but I, I don't like the thumb, uh, the, not the thumbnail, but the uh, banner. Let me tell you why I don't like it. Um, there's way too much stuff going on here. Um, let's, let's simplify. Um, keep the Monday and Fridays noon Eastern. Uh, let's make this smaller, bring it up here of where you're actually pointing to. Um, because then they know that you're, you're doing videos, all that, that, that other stuff. You don't need to be redundant of having you, your channel name, this here, this here, all, all there. So what I do is I really like this blue. It, it, it really accentuates you uh, well. I just make this blue go all the way across. You can keep it all the way across. Get rid of all this. Make sure this blue right here. Um, hopefully, I, I don't think you can actually see my cursor. Dang it. Um, so the blue that's your background behind you as a person, that's, that's what I want you to do. Like Have that blue go all the way across. Uh, this Wellness for Life logo that you have, that little little thing, put it in the furthest area right over here on this side, um, or put it right up by you right here, and then just take down all this other stuff. You don't necessarily need to have all this stuff. It's good to have, as people know you, but I, I think it's just way too much uh, information to digest. Like all these words are way too much. All these words are way too much. Let's simplify, do it from here. Uh, and then simplicity of the design is, is better. Um, so like I said, the first thing I always do is go to the about. Uh, your about's really good. This is where you can have those items that you have up here, here, which is good. You even have an address and a phone number, which is even better. Um, you have that, it's great. You have business inquiries, it's great. You have a, a bit.ly link. Let's see what that bit.ly link does and it's not clicking for some reason. It might be just the load that I'm doing here. We'll test it out. Nope, that's not working at all. Um, so, so anyway, the Bitly is not going to work uh, here. So you might want to, and they might have uh, deactivated that that feature or whatever. Um, but it's it's good. Uh, some of your keywords um, looks like you have the keywords. I I you know where it says that you cover uh, a wide range of help topics. Maybe what you need to do is like some of the common questions people would ask, I'd put in here uh, that would say holistic health, the best tip, the five best tips for holistic health or something like that, or, you know, getting a little bit more specific. I know that it's keyword here, but the more that you could say topics like this, you know, would be, would be great. Um, the disconnect of your background photo here, um, I would do it the same as this blue that's here. So same shirt, same same pick, just make it the blue so that it's very consistent. That's the theme that we wanna keep. Uh, this disconnects me from that, it's different than the other. Um, so I do this really bright, bright blue behind your, uh, your name itself. Um, and... Um, I can't, I can't remember, um, did you get your, your MD? If you got an MD, I would do your, com, your comma MD. Um, I, I, can't, I know we talked, or I don't know if we talked, but we, we discussed this before, but I can't remember if it is or not. If you did, I'd do that. Um, if not, it, um, if, it's, if it's just a, a, um, a different time of a doctor degree, don't worry about it. Um, this is your best thumbnail right here. I love it. Um, he's on, he, he's, yeah, like this is a really, really good thumbnail. Uh, the title, um, the title is key. Um, you have chiropractic versus medicine, DC versus MD. Um, and you're going through it. 
I I would probably change the titling structure. I, I understand what you're trying to do. This this wouldn't be very good for search. This would be very good for subscribers. Um, and I I would try to find some keywords to go in front of the chiropractic doctor versus medical doctor. Um, because chiropractic doctor versus medical doctor would probably be where I would do it. Cause I, I'd have to see, uh, there's some tools in, uh, vidIQ and also TubeBuddy that you can see how much search volume is there. I'd look at those keywords cause those keywords would actually show up in search. Um, I know chiropractic medicine will be there as well, but if you can get doctor in it, that would probably be a lot better, um, for you in the long run. Uh, thumbnail is just off the charts. Good. Um, the, the other stuff, these older thumbnails, um, and you've heard this before. This is, this is my recommendation from another training that we had. Um, all these other ones, it's just very cluttered. Uh, my eye doesn't know where to go. This one, my eye knows exactly where to go. It goes right here to the verses. Like if I open it and open it up, it's your thumbs up in this verses here. And that's, that's what I'm looking at every time. Um, the, does genes cause cancer? Um, yeah, the good titling. It's just, you might need to, um, look at very high traffic questions and make that your question here. Um, okay. The next thing that I do, let's just go ahead and go on that one. Cause that's, uh, Yeah, these, these are good. Um, you got really good structure on this. Your tagging structure is really good too. Um, and I, I, I've watched a couple of your videos just based off of other, other stuff that we're doing together. Um, I, my, my thing is that the content can be improved. Uh, your thumbnails need to be improved. I go back and replace your thumbnails with better thumbnails for sure. Um, and then your, your titling, um, your titling seems to be more my friend for subscriber versus, um, getting people on. And so I would really, really hone your craft of making it clickable that is searchable, uh, but it's also engaging to your subscriber. And so if I was to grade it, um, your subscriber would be really good. Like the subscriber title would be good if it was just only subscriber views, they'd be decent. Um, Cause they're, they're still clickable, you know, from there, but it would be well below average uh, to grow an audience because the only way you're gonna grow an audience is two ways. Number one is someone's gonna share one of your videos, which is through subscribers. The other way is it's gonna be found in search or suggestion. And both of them are weak for search and suggestion. So your titling, uh, for your, um, videos is where I would put some education in, um, your, your de data, as far as I can see from your description and your, your metadata is fine. Uh, but I, I definitely would spend time titling and, and getting it better, you know, um, like, like one that you could try, like, uh, uh, you know, holistic medicine versus, you know, whatever medicine I, I would see what, what are some titles that would work specifically for you? Uh, go see what comes up with auto suggested when you start typing in how, you know, uh, chiropractic doctor versus and see what it auto fills. Some of that will tell you the most search things, but then there's tools like TubeBuddy and vidIQ that's able to do that. Okay. So hopefully you're able to do it. We can actually dig a little bit deep. I'll contact you. I've been meaning to call you anyway on another, another thing. Uh, some of your content needs to improve and it, it, small tweaks, but like that, that, that's all of us right there for sure. Um, the next one is watch review. This is a channel review. Um, let's go ahead and boost that on there. Um, here we go. Oh, so this is actually watches. Okay. When it says watch review, I was like, okay, watch to review. Okay. Quality watch reviews. That's awesome. Um, okay. So like I said, and I don't want to go through the same stuff every time I off this one, I have no idea when you're posting, like, do you post once a week? Do you post once a month? Do you post every other day? 
Uh, do you post daily? I need to know that. Put that in your banner here. That should be something good that we need to know. Um, also in this, um, I like the black and red. It's just, it's just easy. You know, it's just the easy, easy thing. Um, I would probably change your avatar uh, icon here to the watch face that it's just straight on, that they can tell that it's watch face and the wrist that's there. That's kind of tilted a little bit. That's just kind of an aesthetic thing, but I think would be really powerful. Um, uh, the about section, let's go to that. Definitely needs a lot more. Look, this is what YouTube's looking at is your channel tags and your channel description to start to see what's related to you. Um, and and we'll, we'll go to those uh, channels here in a second, the thing that I look at. Um, you don't feature any other channels. Um, so I would get friends that you want to feature that's in related field. Uh, here's some people to reach out to in your related one, like the Total G Shockers. You click on that, same type of uh, content, you know what I'm saying? Same type of thing, you know? This is probably someone you want to get to know, unless it's you. <laughs> I, I know people that have multiple channels, different watches type things. Uh, but anyway, definitely want to, want to do that. The, um, the, the presentation of the, the watch is, is, is key. Um, doing consistent testing on it is what I would do. If you're doing a review, I'm gonna give you one of the, my favorite reviewers of all time is Jerry Rig Everything. Now, everyone wants to call him Jerry, but his name's Zach, okay? If you watch his reviews that he actually does, um, he, like, here, he has a different types of things. So this one's a, the scratch and bend test. Um, this, like you want to pay very close attention to the, this type of stuff. Look at every scratch and bend test that he does, and you're going to see a pattern of that video content. Um, and you're able to see white background. Notice that he has branding with the stuff that he's scratching with, his, his uh, razor blades. He's literally destroying these cameras to test them out, right? And as you, you're able to see, as you're able to see those things, you know, that's something that you want to do. Um, and and I, I, I can tell you right now, right now, um, I would go to tech and uh, phone reviewers and see if there's something that you can learn about your content to make you a little bit better in that. Um, so with that being said, I would improve your content and I would look to see what their thumbnails and, and title strategies and then just do it for watches. And then you can also do it in the sense of uh, getting a lot more, um, you know, a, a lot better thumbnail images. And then you, you're going to get some ideas of what to do. So like if you're able to do, hey, you're doing a watch review and you probably don't want to do a scratch test or a bend test or a shatter resistant test or dropping this off a, a cliff to see if it survives. But those are the types of videos that will get you uh, people coming back. Um, because you did a review differently than just unboxing and then showcasing it. You unboxed it, showcased it, but then also you tested it out thoroughly to see if it's accurate, if it's durable, whatever the durability and test, whatever. Um, you know, and, and the reality is, you know, this can be super expensive uh, because you're destroying. That's where I'd reach out to uh, different brands to see if you can do some work for them. Uh, or some video that can send you products. Brands are getting smarter and smarter right there. Okay, next one is from Brad Allison. So let's go ahead and go to Brad's channel there. Uh, product reviews, home brewery. Well, okay, so uh, I think the first thing is good Good in the sense of you got your content here. Um, what, what I would do is this, I, I would assume this is a beer here in the middle of it. I would change that out. Um, I would literally have it be a black background and then have your beverage here on the sides like you do, but the actual brew or whatever you're doing there. And it says home brewing, beer reviews and more. Um, and, and then two, right off the, right off the, the, the gate, you got to get better thumbnails. These thumbnails aren't appealing. Uh, I, I don't like them. Um, I would definitely spend more time, uh, you know, getting a good, like I would look at 
uh, products like Budweiser and other products like that of how they showcase their bears um, and see if you can recreate thumbnails like like that. Now, now keep in mind, we're not talking about showcasing the girls. <laughs> we're not going down that path or horses, but when they're actually showing product, that's what you want to look at. And I look at other channels that are, they're doing, uh, I look at uh, any channels that are doing uh, food related uh, products and they're really making appealing thumbnails. I would really, really uh, gauge that. Um, and then two, um, the, the, the titling is, uh, is key. And the more about titling, we, we discuss it on everything, but it, it is, it's key. Um, I don't know, I just don't know who's watching your videos and how they're finding you. Um, I'm looking at, you know, for 1500, 1300, uh, subscribers, you know, you might've been doing it for a while and you get maybe 30 to 60 people watching your videos as the core and then so on and so forth. But that could, could be better. Um, because if, if this is about teaching people how to do things and reviews, you need to go through the, the structure of it. Um, right now, this video does not have tags. I would do tags on your video. This channel doesn't look like it has tags. I would do channel tags so that YouTube knows exactly what you're doing. And so you need to be able to add tags. I have a video called how to properly tag your videos. Uh, go ahead and get that because that's, that's what you need to watch because you need to add tags. Um, your titles, I would improve your titles like... Um, how to make hard cider, uh, from home or at home. I would look to see which one's more searchable for that. And then, um, and I would write do with only using three ingredients and that way you can kind of, or, uh, the ingredients recipe, how to make hard cider at home. You know, that's probably what I would do and kind of go from there. And then ultimately at the end of the day, give a really detailed description, at least three to four, uh, sentences there. Um, another thing that you can do, I noticed that you pinned a comment for yourself. Um, what I would do is maybe put a link in there to another video that's related. Um, also, uh, you have playlists that are here, which is cool. You're trying to get them into a playlist. These look horrendous on mobile and I've tested it. There's like a lesser of a likelihood that they'll actually click on this, uh, to go to your video. And so that being said, I would be very cautious uh, to put more than one playlist in a card. I totally get what you're doing there. I would just do it differently. In your description, I'd also put maybe a video or two um, of related video to and, and making, making a link to the video within a playlist. That's where I'd put that for sure. Uh, let's go to the end card here. Um, end card, uh, you know, it, having you say what to do versus just a screen to come up, uh, would probably be more important. Um, I definitely, definitely do that. Um, so Brad, uh, keep it up. You know, I, I think the big thing is don't get discouraged. Take these tips to, to improve. Okay. All righty. Um, the next one, Let's go to the next channel review here. And it is with anime and you're doing anime reviews. Okay. That could be, this could be really, really huge. Okay. Um, and with your, with your, um, uh, basically channel evaluation, this is probably the biggest advice I can honestly give you. You need to be active in Reddit. If you don't know what Reddit is, if you don't know what Reddit's about, go learn that platform. I've been on for 11 years and there are these subcultures that is so anime specific. Um, they, they talk about certain things. They show certain videos. You'll want to be actively reviewing stuff there written and also have a, a video review. Now with Reddit, if you don't know Reddit, you don't want to be self-promoting. <laughs> That's like the worst thing that you could ever do in Reddit is try to be pushing your content on other people. What you need to do is go engage that community, give value to the community, give your insight and knowledge, 
have a link to your YouTube channel in, you know, in your handle or whatever. So when people find you, oh, oh, he does this. And then maybe someone else in the community will say, hey, you got to check out so-and-so's uh, review on, on uh, whatever anime series that you're actually uh, reviewing. That's the biggest tip. Uh, two, um, it looks like you're going after two languages. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it's just, maybe that's a character. It probably is. Titling, 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 description, 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 thumbnails. You know, you'll, you'll, you get me saying a lot, but I think for your channel review is definitely, definitely, definitely know your audience. You are your audience. Uh, and to grow, it's like literally going where your audience is at. I can tell you your audience is on Reddit. You know, and that's what I would do for sure. Okay, uh, next one. If you want a channel review, channel evaluation, go ahead and put that in as a super chat. Uh, we're going to take a little break here and and talk about between the next uh, couple here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, you know basically Vid Summit. Now Vid Summit is a conference I put on every year. Uh, I love it. And the whole reason why I started was I wanted to learn from the best in the industry. So I invited them to come teach me on stage. That's how it started. And we are in our fifth year and we love it. Like this is a, an event like no other. Uh, this event brings the top creators and agencies and brands and brings them together in one room. And we're really able to share. Now, we are. We have other breakout sessions. We have uh, uh, four total rooms. We have our keynote room and three other rooms that are going, and then we have our keynotes for sure. But this is 100% on the business side of YouTube, business side of video cre creation and content. This is everything about video marketing, video creation. Uh, there, there is, and I and I bring people that I want to learn from. Now, first off. Uh, you don't have to come in person. If you want a virtual ticket, you can get a virtual ticket. If you want to get a ticket to come, I would recommend you do that because these people that come are learning about how to do things from the best in the business. And this is one thing that I didn't explain earlier, but sitting in the audience, we had three channels over 10 million. We had 136 over a million and we had uh, 236 over 500,000. These are the people sitting in the audience. These are not the ones that are presenting. The ones that are presenting this year are Pete McKinnon, Peter McKinnon, uh, Sean Duris, Sean McBride, Sarah Dietschy, Kristen Hills. I can't wait for her presentation. Daniel Markham, Jim Lauterback, the CEO of VidCon, uh, Melissa Hunter, who's one of my favorite people. And we got just, you can go down through the whole list. You can go to vidsummit.com. You'll see some of your favorite creators there, your favorite marketers. Uh, and you will see a ton more added to the Vid Summit because we are adding uh, new creators here in the next week. And we're also adding our agenda. But you'll want to get your ticket now because once that happens, we are raising the price. And you don't, you want to, this is the cheapest it'll ever be. Okay. All right. So let's do another channel review. The next one is going to Don's Family Vacations. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that one up. Uh, if you want a channel review, go ahead and put that super chat in there. Uh, you're able to see that we actually have the family vacation vlog, it looks like, or tips for great vacations from Don's family. Okay, so this being said, um, look, I'm going to give you a tip that I haven't given yet, but I you didn't necessarily feature any other channels that you like. I would feature maybe two or three channels. That's really, really important. Um, and then, and then ultimately at the end of the day, you know, that I, I, I'm very particular on, on this. Um, I, I know the airplane means so much to travel, but for me, uh, that is like, yeah, I changed that to more of a destination instead of getting there. Cause this, this is like, you're, you're traveling too, but you're trying to do vacations. So. I would do de destination that, that people want. So is it as a secluded um, beach shot or whatever? I would be bright and vibrant colors up here. Um, I would be, you know, the blues. Blues are always really, really good. But, you know, have it be a, a one of those things that says, oh, man, I want to see this. Uh, you go from there. Your thumbnails need some improvement. Uh, and I understand that you're using 
this from Norwegian uh, Cruise Line, but you can find some really good pictures from Norwegian and and um, and and use this. Ten things that you wish you knew about Norwegian uh, Cruise Line, but have it be more than just a talking head uh, thumbnail with a picture. You know, um, I would literally uh, take out this text. I can't even tell what this text is. You know, what I would do is make better thumbnails, uh, have it be uh, a very prominent picture that you, that you can use of Norwegian Cruise Line um, and basically having 10, thing, or 10 things to know. Um, and then that way you can get your titles and stuff to go there. But all your thumbnails look the same to me. They're not really appealing to me at all. Um, and I, I, I'm here to tell you that I am your demographic. I travel more than most people travel in a lifetime. I travel in a year, you know, and I, I do that. I know exactly that that feel. What they're looking for is um, they're looking for things that they need to know before they go. And people are, that are prepping, I don't prep, but, you know, I just go and do. I prep when I'm there. <laughs> but the, I think the key is, is you're, you're getting to people and you're painting the picture of the things that they should know and you're giving them tips to vacation. So that's what I would do. Make these the most appealing thumbnails as ever and literally get the, um, the, the, um, the titling down. Um, words like secret tips or insider tips or um, you know, things that you can't, you know, that you need to know before you go. Those are really powerful titles. Uh, you know, I like even doing 10 secret tips for Norwegian uh, Cruise Line or, or Royal Caribbean or be very specific of the boat because these people are looking at specific boats too. Uh, I, I would do that as well. Um, you know, like one, one thing is like the chef's tour you could literally video that and says like, you know, things that you should have known and you could have gotten, you know, the, the extra amenities. Um, one thing's about a cruise that I didn't know was doing the, you know, and this is me personally. Uh, it wasn't until I went a couple times that I didn't even realize it was there. It's like, if you ever want to get massages or, you know, the spa, <laughs> there's no better place in the world to do that. And it's so relaxing and it's just like one of the best things ever. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a segment. And then I would actually look at ways to really get your thumbnails to pop because right now, um, I mean, you're competing. Let me show you what you're competing with just so that you can see, okay? You are competing with yourself. It's gonna come up because I was just on it. That's just the way that it is. But you're competing with this. Look at, the, look at that. You're competing with that. You're competing with the slides. You know, this is what you're competing with. And I look at what you're competing with. Some of it's not good. Some of it's better. Like this is good. You know, this is really good. You know, showing different shots. This is really, really good. This is even better. Showing the versus versus, right? Yeah. I mean, look at this one. Like... Look at, I, I'm just looking at the views, okay? This one has 200,000 views because, look, that's an awesome thumbnail. This one right here where it says best cruises from four major cruise lines. And I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that thumbnails matter. Like thumbnails, like thumbnails is where it's at. It's just, you have to have good thumbnails at the end of the day. If not, you're really, really going to not never be found, okay? Uh, next super chat, super chat channel consultation. Hope you're finding value in this. Uh, you know, it's something that I love to do. I like to go more in depth. Uh, I, 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 I want to make this announcement before I go to this next one. Um, I have been literally, uh, not doing one-on-one -on -one consults because of time and so on and so forth. If you do want a consultation, a one-on-one -on -one consultation for me, Go right here and hit schedule consultation. You click on that link. It will literally take you to a page. It's an application page, but it's a page, mind you, uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one consult with me. Um, I do know that this is not affordable for everyone. Not everyone's in a situation that can do it. My time's extremely valuable. Uh, so if you want a quick uh, consultation slash evaluation, put a super chat now. Uh, and you're able to get it for a very, very reduced price, but it's not going to be as in-depth either. 
So um, if you want more in depth, more personalized, you got to do it. So the next one uh, is Belinda Rose. Uh, let's go to hers. Um, so basically, um, channel reviews, shout outs, so on and so forth. So she has 38 subscribers. Um, I, I don't know what the channel's about looking at it. It says, are you, are you in a circus? Are you at a circus? Or do you like the circus? Do you listen to circus, the music? Um, I have no idea. So knowing what that is, is better. Uh, if it's on your own personal channel and you're just like doing whatever you want and your life's a circus, then say my life's a circus, you know, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, and, and, and two, it, it's key that, um, you look at this and I understand what's going on here. Um, you're doing a live stream and you're doing it vertical and, um, you know, so, you, you know, it's basically going from there. So what I, what I would do is even with your live streams, you can still do a custom thumbnail and I would do a custom thumbnail before every one of my live streams. In fact, I do that custom thumbnail before every live streams. Um, just to have this thing up here that says live on it, I I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. And it's a little icon that basically, or emoji that you're able to do. I wouldn't necessarily do that. Uh, get rid of that and then just put here, you know, live, live down below. Um, you have no description. I can just tell you right now, all I see is Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram. I want to know what this video is about. You don't even have a description in these. Like, I want to know what these videos about. You're doing better here uh, for sure. Um, I would also too, um, let's go to playlist here. Eh. Looks like you have some good playlists. Oh, I can't uh, show videos like that. Um, You got some channels that you subscribe to. I would definitely get more of your uh, about. Now, I'd really love to get more in depth uh, with these, with you know, like picking apart some videos. And I think what I'm going to do in the future is um, have people do some super chats uh, on a call, and then I get you to sign a release because I have to do a release on this, and then we're able to uh, dig deep into some video content too. Does that sound like a good idea? Go ahead and put that in the comments if you think it's a good idea. Um, the next one, going to this one. And it says, the question's about Social Blade can't even recognize the type of our channel. Uh, is this the reason why it suggests is really low? Um, Social Blade's a great tool. Um, I think they're amazing. Um, and I believe they're coming to... Uh, to uh, vid some of this year, um, you, to, to get your channel um, to have, have it be recognized by the category, you need to go in the default section and you gotta select what category of videos that is. So you're not selecting a category for your videos. So you don't necessarily do it by your, your channel, but you do it by your uploads. And so you basically need to set it in your default upload settings and change your your uh, video type to say what type of uh, video it is. Does that have a difference between getting you video views or not? Um, it might have a slight difference, but ultimately at the end of the day, YouTube's looking at the data that it's making to make decisions of where to actually recommend your channel and your videos. Now, where they're basically doing that is in this, your viewers, what your viewers do, your meta information, um, you know, that that's the whole thing is if you're getting good meta information, which is your title, your description, your tags, YouTube's looking at that. They're looking at your content. They're looking at how many people come on, watch the whole thing. How many come on and just leave after two seconds, have to come on, leave after 30 seconds, whatever it may be. YouTube's looking at that and trying to make an assessment of who would be the most likely to watch. Because the main reason why YouTube is doing all this is that's trying to predict what people will watch. Cause if they predict what people will watch, they will watch longer. That's that's just normally what it is. So I would definitely do that. Um, right now you're going to playlists here. I would change that up where it's your most recent uploads. Um, and you can have your created playlist down there, but I definitely do your most uploads because when I come to channel, 
All I got is one video that you posted three days ago. I have to click on the, the video tab, which is another place that I got to click to be able to see your specific videos. Um, and, then, and then two, do more videos like this. You have literally, literally uh, 697 views in one day and you look at all the other stuff. Here's another one. So I do reacting stuff. Look at this. Have the words react in the title. Um, see, you're able to see that this is another reaction, 661 videos or video views, you know, let's see if it's a constant theme. It's just a few new ones. So I, I do some follow-up vi videos to that. Maybe there's more information that you can react to. I don't know. Um, that's basically what I would do. And, um, yeah, work on your thumbnails too. You know, it's really, really important that you work on your thumbnails. I think er everyone should work on their thumbnails for sure. Um, okay. All right. Uh, we're just getting ready to wrap up here. We got a couple more channel reviews. Um, let me do Greg here. All right. I like your banner. That's really cool. That's a really good banner, by the way. Me likey. People would say it's too busy, but zombies are busy, and I, I like I like that. Um, I, I really, really like your banner. Very, very engaging. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at your thumbnails. Um, your thumbnails are decent. They could improve. Um, you know, I I I, I think the, the key is seeing which ones work. Uh, you can go into the new YouTube studio beta and you can start clicking on different videos and see where they're at uh, with the click through. See what your highest click through rate is. Um, I would just basically go to see what your top performing videos. I mean, you, look at this, 10,000 uh, views uh, in, in uh, 20 hours where this one six days ago is uh, 7.3. So I'd do more um, you know, type of, uh, of content like this for sure. Your description's very weak. Um, I know that you're probably wanting to get people to Twitch, but I would just literally make it really, really engaging um, so that they can actually see what it's about here. Um, and I definitely would do that for sure. Um, also, uh, I mean, you got a decent amount of subscribers, but get better description, uh, improve your, your thumbnails for sure. Your titling... Um, I, I, I would definitely do this, Greg, um, and this is really, really important, is go into real-time analytics, sort by uh, the last 60 uh, minutes, see which videos that are actually getting the most views, see how old those videos are, and try to figure out, is there a titling uh, thing that's doing it? Is it the thumbnail? Is it the content? kind of get an idea of what theme it is. And you might be able to say, oh, I'm doing these certain things in these videos, but I'm not in these. And these are the ones that are getting watched over and over and over again. And these are the ones that YouTube's actually suggesting out. Then you want to do more content like that. So um, everybody go check him out. Super cool. Greg FPS. All right. All right. So let's go to the next one. We're getting close to wrapping it up. So if you want to do a, a, a channel eval real quick, you definitely want to... Uh, put your super chat in there. Um, and this one. Okay, this one is in Finnish, which is cool. I mean, I'd always recommend you do it in your, um, you definitely do it in your native tongue. Um, I, I think this is a pretty funny, um, uh, banner for sure. I'd redo it a little bit, a little cluttered around. Like, like I, this is pretty funny for me. I, I really like it. I think it's funny, but it's a little cluttered. Uh, and, and it might be your playroom. I get it. You know what I'm saying? That you want to showcase different things. Um, it, like, I, I think there's a way to do that where maybe you dole everything out except for you and your title. And it's just more black and white or, you know, maybe it's just, uh, the opacity is, is modified a little bit. You're able to, to do that. You know, that's, that's, I think that's the key. Um, I, once again, like on everyone's, it's just like, I, I can't do the titles cause I, I don't speak Finnish, but, 
Um, you definitely need to do better on your thumbnails. It's something that everyone should do. Go look at some big YouTubers that have the same type of content. They're doing better thumbnails for sure. Uh, playlists. Looks like you have some decent playlists there. Um, improve your about for sure. It looks like you have featured channels, which is good. I, I think... I think the the important thing there though is um, that like I, I would do a better avatar that is maybe more engaging or funnier. I, I just don't know what this says. I think this says that it's your playroom probably in finish. Um, but when that's like that's big here, but everywhere else it's gonna be super small. And so I, I definitely look at you know what you're what you're doing there for sure. Okay, we're wrapping this up, uh, and I do appreciate all the super chats. Very, very, very helpful. We're gonna go, and someone I gave a review a while back on doing better thumbnails, and he's wanting to see where I think the thumbnails are. Uh, I remember this one, and it's with the salon guy, and um, thumbnails are better. Um, your arrows are good. Um, you don't need to take me literal on everything to have arrows in everyone, but I actually like it though. I, you know, it, it, it's working for me. Um, I still think that there's too much text in your thumbnail. Um, you know, and I think that's the, you know, you gotta, you gotta look at, you gotta look at it when it's right or what it for. I really like this one. This is a really good thumbnail. Um, you know, the only would be, um, it, it, it would be changing this a little bit. Instead of having an X, it'd be versus. Um, and I would say um, hipster, hipster, who's more hipster or something like that. Uh, but you're like literally bun, man bun, no man bun. You know, you versus this. That would make it a better thumbnail. And then you can talk about that. I like your before and afters. Um, it would be better if he was smiling, <laughs> you know. But yeah, it, it, you, you definitely improved on it. Um, than where it's at. I still think there's room for improvement for sure, but it's it's it definitely a lot better. I mean, you're you're doing it, uh, you're taking at it, you're taking it, and you're taking it uh, in in the right direction. Um, now let's just see which one's getting higher click throughs and do more video or more thumbnails like that for sure. Okay, okay, we're getting close to wrapping up now. Uh, we got two left. Um, here we go. All right. So the next one, uh, creatively inspired. Okay. So here we have, we have, uh, 720 subscribers. Let's see how long they've been on YouTube for. Uh, this doesn't mean that they are uploading content, uh, since 2010, Let's see how long they've been uploading content. Um, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's six years ago. Okay. Um, okay. My my thing is um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a little power tip here. Um, sometimes when you start a YouTube channel, you'll have videos that you uploaded way back when that has no relevance to the, the attended viewer that's happening. Um, I always encourage my clients when I come in and meet with them to do the, the purge. <laughs> and I don't, like, I, don't, I don't like to purge uh, content that continually gets views because then I just say, hey, look, this content's getting views. Why don't we do more of that? And, and you know, I encourage them to do that. But older content that don't get many views or hardly any views, uh, like you have a video that's six years old that has 43 views uh, of your sister singing happy birthday, what you're able to do is go into Video Manager, click on the download uh, video, and you can download your own videos from YouTube. So I download that video, save it, upload it to a different channel, and then delete this video off of the existence if it has nothing to do with this channel. Now, if it does, then keep it there. 
But even when it does, sometimes I delete older videos that are non-performing um, just to give the right signals to YouTube. Because as soon as you delete it, it deletes all that data that YouTube has, and maybe it changes a little bit here or there. I don't encourage everyone just to delete their stuff. I don't encourage you to do a blanket delete on all your stuff. I, I know that can hurt channels. What I'm saying is very strategic ways to look at videos that are non-related on your channel, they're not performing, to delete them is not a bad thing, okay? Um, but yes, look at your thumbnails, look at your, you know, I, I, I feel like I say the same thing, but that's basically where it's at, you know, uh, you know, for this type of content. It's just, you really, really, really need to improve. Um, I would definitely do better, uh, better titles for sure. Uh, the, the titles that I was able to see, that's, that's something that you could definitely improve on. Oh, okay. We are so close. Okay. We're, we're, we're almost there. And I got it. I'll have to wrap up. Some of them I won't be able to do, even if you leave a super chat. Um, I'll, I'll see if we can do them next time. But I do have to end on time because I have meetings. Um, hopefully, do you guys find this helpful? Go ahead and put it in the comments if you do. Do you want to see more of these? I'm more than happy to do them. I, I love the more tips and techniques stuff. Uh, but I know that you guys want uh, me to showcase your uh, channels like this one and, and to be able to give some feedback. And this is, this is pretty good. I, Pretty is like that, that, uh, that banner tells me what it is, um, that you you do knitting webs. You know, I can tell that you're at, my mom would probably love this channel. Um, and she, she does that. You have a, a ton of subscribers, which is good. Um, the question is, is, are they viewing you as a resource or are they truly engaging with every video? And for me, it looks like they're viewing as a resource. It's okay, because my YouTube channel that you're watching right now is a resource channel. Uh, you can still get a ton of views. Um, I would definitely look at doing better titling of seeing what people are actually searching for when it comes to uh, doing, uh, to cast on and use blah, blah, blah with your knitting. Um, there are a ton, let me re repeat this, a ton of blogs out there that are giving the same type of advice over and over again, and they're very good at seeing what comes up first. So I'd put the keyword in and see what people are asking and what, what the keywords are, and I would make it keyword rich titles that are clickable, like how do you do this, how do you do that, because that's what people are wanting to know, and you're giving them tips and reviews and tech, uh, tactics and strategies. Uh, definitely improve your thumbnails. Uh, you need to showcase your uh, the stuff more and winding yarn, you could be really creative with that. Um, you know, and, and it's just like coming up with ideas uh, to do thumbnails. And let me tell you how important the idea is to get good thumbnails. So I, we had a video shoot last night. I got my family in the car. We drove 30 minutes away to go to this place that we were doing the video shoot. The only reason why I went wasn't for the content, wasn't to create video content. It was making sure we had the right thumbnail. <laughs> we went and took the thumbnail shots and then I left. You know, that's how important thumbnails are. So that's what you guys need to do. So do better thumbnails. Everyone, please. The end. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do the next one. Uh, we are wrapping up. Um, looks like we have a few more that have jumped in um, since that. Did I miss anyone? I don't think. No, no, no. Okay. Um, we're, we're happening here. It would be so much better to. Uh oh. I got to ch change some of my windows here. I'm getting to. I've been just open up new banner type stuff. Because that's what you do when you're doing it by yourself is you. you uh, open up a whole bunch of tabs in one browser and the browser can't take it anymore. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? That's, that's the story of my life. I have too many <laughs> browser tabs open in my life. Okay, um, let's see. There we go. Hooray. Okay, so here we're at. Look at that six pack. You got some six pack sports performance. There you go. Um, not too hip on the green and brown and black. Just do it black across the board. <laughs> P 
pick a color that's just not not for me. I you can keep your logo the way it is, but just do black across board or something. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's good. Maybe uh, minimize this so that it's not as bold. Uh, maybe use it so it's not a bold font. You can just be a regular font or, or even a light font, which is fine. Um, your thumbnails are not bad, not bad. You know, I, I think your thumbnails are great. Um, this is the only thing I don't like about it is this banner. Like on the side, you have your branding. I, I forget you can't see my, uh, um, my uh, cursor. But on the side of every one of your thumbnails, you have your branding element. Um, you need to have a branding element that's really, really small. I don't necessarily like it because like, it literally pulls my eye away from what your video content or your thumbnail content is because all the lettering and the way that it, it's positioned. Um, it's just, it's very, very distracting. I understand why you're doing it. I understand the purpose behind it. If you're going to do it, like pick one element of your logo that's the same, but in the same sense, you're, you're your own brand and you're in the thumbnail. That should be just as recognizable as a branding image. And so I, I definitely would get rid of that. I know, I do know, I do know that there are educators in this space that tell you to do it. I'm telling you that that tactic's about three years old. And I literally test and test and test and test and test and test and test again. And I, I did that strategy three years ago, but there's no way in heck you would convince me to do it right now because I tested it. I can see what converts higher. And now here's the lovely thing is now I'm able to see it where before I was just testing and we'd had to do ad testing to see if it was making a difference, if we had a higher click through rate or not. And I did it. I paid money to see if it did to test my theories. But now YouTube gives us the, uh, the impression and the click through rate uh, data. And, and they, they do it so that we can see if it's effective or not. And I can tell you right now, you can test it and you'll see, you can do a split test and you'll be able to see that you will get higher click through by taking that branding element off. You just will, you will. And, and it, you know, where it's at, it's very distracting, but yeah, that's kind of where it's at. Um, definitely titles and so on. Um, the, the description, follow me for this. Like, get, just talk about the videos out. Don't say follow you for it. Just, just tell them what the video is about. Um, that's one thing that I would do time and time and time again. Okay. Um, and we're getting down to the last two. This is, I'm only doing two more. Um, and then we're going to kind of wrap up here. Okay, Stylus Raven. There we go. So um, I like your I like your thing. It's a little cluttered, but it still it works for me because uh, you did it in black and white, and I, I like it. It just it looks good. It, that looks good. Um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at your your thumbnails because today is all about thumbnails. Um, I would definitely, 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 definitely do better thumbnails. Um, it's like go to other uh, stylus slash beauty like tips. Um, and look at the, the consistency. Um, I, I definitely would look at uh, doing professional shoots. You're doing content, your video content doesn't matter. It's like literally getting the right lighting and really taking the right shot and, 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 and go through this. I, I mean, seriously, like I have spent hours trying to get the one thumbnail picture. I know that's crazy but that's what I do because if they're not going to click on it, um, then they're, and, and some people literally, um, don't give it thought. They give it afterthought and you don't want to give it afterthought. What you want to do is give it thought, uh, you know, of what you're going to do for the thumbnail, what you're going to do for the video, what you're going to do for the title before you even pick up the camera. So when you're actually shooting the video, you're actually doing the thumbnail, uh, and title. Uh, but you might find other ideas that work better. Okay. All right. Very good, Style Straven. That's I, I really like the um, the cover art. The last one of the day, the last one of the show. I don't really sing, but that's what we get when we're getting there. Um, live streams daily. Okay, there we go. Uh, Ezra Lynn, K 
Okay, this, uh, I really like the banner. I like even how you have, hey, you're across the board on multiple socials. Um, you're talking about daily. That works for me. That really works. The background on this one, um, you could brighten it up. It's a little dark or dark, uh, brighten up your, uh, your photo on your avatar icon. That would be good. Um, thumbnails are decent. Like I, I kind of like it, you know, um, this little AZ thing might be your, um, your, your, your branding you're trying to, to test out. Um, that's, that's good. Uh, you, you know, it, it, it's okay. It's not taking up a lot of spot space. Uh, if it distracts from the, the thumbnail, that's what you need to look at. I, I do branding elements. I usually do it on the lower side right here. And you're basically your branding element as, you, as you're coming in here on the side of it. But, um, you know, some of these, these, these are really good, you know, decent thumbnails. Um, and it looks like your live, uh, your live streams, your daily streaming is good. Uh, get, get, get better with your descriptions. Um, your tagging, or I'm sorry, your title um, could work for gaming. Um, but once again, I don't care that you're, you're like, seriously, like, this is a really important thing. I don't care in the title that you put 1080p, 60 frames per second. It doesn't mean squat to me. Um, do I want you to do 1080, 60? Absolutely I do. Uh, and, and I want you to maybe put it in your description in the very, very bottom part <laughs> of it, if that's what someone's looking for, an interactive st stream. Uh, but in the, it, the reality of it, I don't need it in the title. Get rid of it. Um, you know, and I, I, would, I like the word interactive stream on this one. It's great. Um, cause they're basically telling you what to do in the video, but get rid of that, get rid of the, just, it doesn't belong. You're cluttering it up. You don't need it. Um, I would get more reactions of you reacting instead of just smiling in every video, like really getting some, some crazy reaction shots. Um, one, one guy I really like, um, a lot. I just gave him a whole bunch of money yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I, I really did is Mustard Plays. Um, and I, I wanna tell you why I like him. He's a good friend. I, I am a sponsor to his channel, um, but I like his thumbnails. I, his thumbnails work for me. Um, and I, I go on every once in a while and give him a, a few bucks here or there. Um, and it's just to make his day. And uh, like, these are good thumbnails. Like this is a type of reaction type shots that I would do. Um, I don't know. I never asked him about his thumbnails, but you know, getting the reaction is really important. And I think you could do like a photo shoot and get as many reactions as you need, um, all, all in one, one time. So you're able to do that for sure. Um, let me go back to, um, and then, and then too, a big thing about, uh, live streaming, as you know, uh, same time, same place, same channel, uh, getting the community involved, um, getting elements. And I didn't, haven't watched one of your live streams, but I will subscribe right now and I will, I will, uh, put on the bell. So the next time that you're live streaming, I can, I can take a look at that. Um, and just to validate that I did here, here I am, I am subscribed, the bell's on. Um, and the reason why I, I do that is like, um, you got it, you're, you're doing interactive streams. And so the way you interact, but does your community know, you are they do they feel a part of it do they feel a part of your day the more that you can make that happen and the more elements that you can really pull in and what works what doesn't work is the type of content you need to create so okay guys um before everyone jumps off i'm going to give some very big uh, power tips uh there have been a ton of you that have been on the whole time i am literally blown away that we've done three hours 16 minutes and you guys are still here congratulations <laughs> this is what i'm going to do um I wasn't planning on doing this, but this is what I'm going to do. I am going to give away a ticket to Vid Summit. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so to get a ticket to Vid Summit, I'm going to do a giveaway right now that you can get a ticket to, to Vid Summit. If you can come in person, that's great. If not, you get a virtual pass. I'm going to give uh, one ticket away. And basically what I want you to do is literally tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat right now, why you would like to come to the Vid Summit. Go ahead and put it in there. I'm gonna literally give the ticket away right now uh, for you. 
and it's going to be fun. You know, we're going to make this happen. You'll be my guest and I will invite you to some of the things that are happening that nobody else gets to go to because you're my guest. How's that sound? Does that sound good? You guys want to do that? So put that in there. If you already bought your ticket, if you already bought your ticket, if you win, I will reimburse you your, your ticket price. And you get to go with me on that. Or that how does that sound? Does that sound good? That sounds great. Let's see. I, I want to see how people think about that. So if you want to come to the Vid Summit, uh, you definitely need, need, need to put why you want to come to the Vid Summit. I am going to randomly pick a winner. You're going to get it. You're going to be able to come. Now, keep in mind that you'll have to take care of your own transportation getting there. You'll have to take care of your... your uh, uh, accommodations, but I will definitely get you a ticket, which is worth a lot of money to come to the vid summit and meet with me. And I'll personally probably even pick you up at the airport. How does that sound? <laughs> we just got to arrange that perf perfectly, right? Okay. Um, and who, I, I think we should do one other thing. Um, like, like just one other thing to, to help me out. You're, you're putting it in here. I I'm seeing the stuff. I'm going to randomly, uh, pick it. Um, but what I want you to do is uh, some of you are on mobile and I know that you'll have to, to break a session and, and go. Some of you are on desktop. Uh, go ahead and also I'm going to pick a winner uh, here, but I'm going to also look for tweets and stuff. And I'm going to randomly pick a winner, anyone that has shared about the Vid Summit of why they want to come to the Vid Summit. Um, if they shared on social media, if they shared on Facebook, on Twitter, wherever, they share it. I'm going to give a, a prize here on your comment and another one, which will be another ticket to anyone that actually shares it. So uh, go to vidsummit.com. We're, we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, Facebook. We're on YouTube. Follow us and share it and explain why you would like to go to the Vid Summit and put the vidsummit.com link in there. Uh, maybe add a picture or add a video of you. Um, I I'll do this. We'll, we'll pick a winner that way, and we'll pick a winner right now by just saying that you want to come and why you want to come. Does that sound good? Does that sound great? Who wants to do that? You know you want to come to the Vid Summit. And plus, you, you'll get to hang out with me, like in person, I are, in real life, IRL. <laughs> you have no idea how much I want to meet you in person. Like seriously, like I, at the end of the day, that's why I travel a lot and I do a lot of in-person meetings, is so I get to meet you guys and go from there. And the best place to do that for sure is at the Vid Summit. So if you if you want to do that, <clears throat> if you want to connect with me, um, let's do that for sure. But to win this ticket, I'm picking a winner right now on the live stream, totally random. All you got to do is pick why you want to come to the Vid Summit, uh, what it means to you, and I'll randomly pick it, close my eyes and go for it. And then two, um, I'll pick one winner in the next few days of anyone that posted anything social about the Vid Summit of why you want to come and how important the Vid Summit is. Uh, and we go from there. Now, here's the important thing is if you already have a ticket, I will give you your money back and I'll pick you up at the airport. Does that sound good? I mean, it's literally like a couple blocks away from where we're at. So I mean, maybe we'll walk. Well, I need to walk. I need to, to burn a calorie or two. Okay, so I gave you enough time. You know that there's two ways to, to win. One, right now I'm picking a winner. None, one, another one on social. Let's do this. Let's make this happen. Uh, you know, make sure you tag me. Make sure you tag uh, Vid Summit. Make sure you tag some other people that are speaking that you want to you wanna, uh, learn from. You know, make it really re interactive. Uh, the more you post, the better chances that we'll see it. Um, I am looking for creativity here. Uh, not just because your post, but your creativity, your passion, your drive, why you want to come. Let's see if we can make that happen, right? Okay, so for that being said, the winner, and I'm pu putting it in here, um, the winner, the winner, the winner, holy cow. Let me, it is just cruising fast, fast, fast. Okay, the winner is, this, this, this is random, random. Closing my eyes and I'm about ready to point. I'm gonna to point to the screen. You're not able to see it, but I'm gonna able to see it. This is what we're able to do, ready? Is that is that that's that's an easy way to do it, right? Okay, pointing, screen, touching, now. Okay. All right, okay, I'm I've got it, I got it, got it. And the winner is, I'm going to the channel right now. 
I need some celebration here. Now, if you, if you are, <laughs> that's pretty funny. If <laughs> that's really funny. If you are coming to the vid summit or not, like I said, I'll reimburse you, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, but uh, the winner is, I got their YouTube channel out. It kind of makes me happy because it is the travel vlog family. You are coming to the vid summit. I will get you one ticket in the door. You'll be able to uh, either come in person or you will be able to get a virtual ticket because if you travel, that's just the way it is. But you, your pass will be paid by me uh, and you'll be able to go to the vid summit. Now, I don't want you guys to get disappointed that you didn't win yet because I'm still picking another winner. And what we're going to do is look on social media out, uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube of why you would like to come to the vid summit, um, post out there to the world about the vid summit, the speakers that you want to do. If you've come to the vid summit before, talk about what vid summit means to you. If you've bought replays, why you want to come in person, put that on social media and what we're going to do, make sure you use the, uh, you tag us cause we're on all social media out there, but also use the hashtag vid summit 2018. And we'll be able to sort through that. Uh, I want you guys to win. Now, the more that you post, the more probability that we're able to see it. I'm going to be looking and my staff's going to be looking. Uh, even Sean Duras will be looking uh, to see if and who we're going to pick randomly to win the virtual ticket. In fact, I feel really generous right now. I really do. So we'll do two tickets. Why not? We'll do two different people. We will pick a male and a female and, and we'll make that happen. So what do you guys think? Think that's a great idea? Go ahead, make sure you tag us. Use the, the hashtag VidSummit2018. Why you want to come, put it out there, and we will see you on the next video.